One to go. Good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay speaking to you from Inverness. It's going to be a long afternoon, so I hope you're comfortable and all set to stay with us. It should be most exciting as uh, the final round of play uh, proceeds. Hale Irwin, as we said, trying to regain the title that he won five years ago at Wingfoot back in 1974. We'll be following that final pair all the way around, from the first shot they hit on the first hole to the last putt they make on the final hole. When it's all over or when they will continue to a playoff tomorrow, should that eventuate, of course, we would also be here for that. As for the weather today, well, uh, the wind is up again. It's going to be very much of a factor. There are clouds. There is some chance of rain at the moment. It doesn't look too bad. We hope that it will hold off. Right now, I want to, why don't we take a look at the golf course that we're discussing here at Inverness, ho hosting the Open for the fourth time. Now, the holes in light green that go around the perimeter of the golf course are the front nine. The ones in red are the back nine. As you see, they go back and forth, actually back and forth across a rather deep ravine and into the wind and downwind. That long trek home is really going to be something later on this afternoon. Is it a long golf course? Well, it'll play even longer with the wind, of course, but it's long enough already. It's just under 7,000 yards, as you can see. Par 35 going out, 36 coming back in for a total of 71. And how does that break down? Well, let's break it down a little more for you. Here is a look at the front nine. As you see, there are two par threes and just one par five for that total of 35. As for the backside, it's slightly different, just one par three and one par five. As we said yesterday, a little bit unusual for the Open Championship for a total of 36 and the grand total, as we say, par 71. Well, right now, why don't we bring in our resident expert on the sport of golf, former PGA champion Dave Marr, who played here back in 1957. He was uh, celebrating his 12th birthday at the time <laughs> and one of the youngest competitors ever. Dave, it's uh, good to have you with us. As always, we have a confrontation here between two of the best golfers on tour, uh, former British Open champion Tom Weisskopf, former U.S. Open champion Hale Irwin. Is this going to favor either of their games, the high wind here? Jim, they're both, as you pointed out, very good players. I mean, uh, Tom and, and Hale both for the last 10 years have been two of our best players. And part of being a great player is the adaptability. I don't think it favors either one. They've both won major championships. If I had to lean toward one, maybe toward Hale, because at Wingfoot, you had the same sort of greens that you have here. Mm -hmm. Small greens, a lot of hills. The important thing here is the speed. And the tougher the golf courses are, the better he seems to like them, although the open courses are always difficult. Certainly Wingfoot and Inverness would be two of the toughest. Absolutely. When you play the old courses and the small targets and the deep rough, though it's not as deep here as it was at Wingfoot, you get the conditions. A Hale Irwin is a very, very hard competitor. Wisecoff, on the other hand, hasn't played well this year. Discovered he had an ulcer. Uh, I don't know which came first, the ulcer or the bad putting stroke. Yesterday he seems to have found his putting touch. And uh, can Tom play well enough, though, to put some heat on Hale? It, even though he putted well, I mean, you have 10 putts on the front nine, you can't look to do that again today. Well, Tom has what you might call the home court advantage. After all, this is his home state. He went to Ohio State. He was born in Massillon, saw his first U.S. Open early right on this golf course. He's got all that, and that is something, the psychological aspect. On the other hand, doesn't he hit a much taller, higher ball than Hale? Would that affect him at all in the wind? Well, it could, but if he hit the ball solid, the wind's not going to affect it as much, Jim. And he can use a lot of irons there. That He's the stronger of the two players, so he can gear down maybe a little more than Hale. And Hale, to me, is a, a surprising guy. He's a cool customer. Last night, we were at a barbecue together, and he was there with Sally and his two kids. And I'm going over to breakfast this morning. There he is teaching his little girl about swimming in the pool at 9 o'clock this morning. Now, that's a long time to wait around and go out and play. You can see Mark in his ball there, which I want to say to the fans is a good idea whenever you go to play. Put a mark on it so you can identify that that is your ball. And, of course, this is a live picture right now. A little bit earlier, our man on the fairways, Bill Fleming, talked to Hale. He asked him, what does the U.S. Open really mean? To me, Bill, the professional golf or golf in general is the U.S. Open. I believe in what it stands for. I believe in the difficulty of the courses. I, uh, I believe in all those things. And there's great arguments, pro and con, whether we should have rough as deep as we do, greens as fast, this or that. And, and I don't particularly uh, am a follower of that. I am, I am a believer in, in par being a good score. I'm, I guess you can say I'm a traditionalist in a way. And, and when they started the game, uh, a par is what it took to get from the tee to the hole. And, and right now we've, we've got last week's score, 23 under par. Uh, you know, those are phenomenal scores. And sure, our players are fantastic. And, and the courses, we're, we're developing our skills to the point where we can handle most all courses now. 
that's why I like to, the trend back to these kinds of difficult courses, getting back to where par is something to be proud of. That was Hale Irwin just an hour or two ago, and here's the live picture of Tom Weisskopf. The question that Bill asked him was slightly different. What would it mean to you, Tom, in your home state to finally win the Open? To win an Open would mean an awful lot to me because it's the first golf tournament I ever saw, Bill. My father took me to this Open Championship when I was 15 years old, and that was the year I started playing golf. And I was in the gallery applauding all the great players and watching those people walk around, you know, the Sneeds and the Bolts and the Demers. Where was it, uh, Tom? Right here at Inverness. at Inverness. First time I ever saw, and I thought these guys were gods. I mean, I never could con conceive of somebody driving the ball prodigious distances and straight, you know, and the finesse they had. And, of course, you know, to a little kid 15 years old that could barely break 90, I thought, well, you know, that, that's just the greatest thing in the world if I could do that, what they're doing someday. And that's why I think it would mean an awful lot to me because uh, Ohio has given me the, it's the birthplace of my golf. And it's where I learned to play. We have some great courses in this state. And I, and I think it, uh, it is a deserving place to play a championship. And I just hope that maybe I'd be fortunate enough to win the championship here. Well, maybe a good many of you have never seen exactly what happens on the first tee. You saw one thing there, as Dave said, a very interesting and important thing, Hale Irwin putting a special this mark on his ball. It's not enough to see round. the name. Uh, here's John Lopheimer of the USGA. will be Frank D. Tatum, Jr., President of the United States Golf Association from San Francisco, California. The observer is Gordon H. Ewan, a member of the United States Golf Association Executive Committee from Winnetka, Illinois. Now on the tee, time Weisskopf, play away please. Well that makes it official, John Lopheimer making the announcement to the crowd gathered around the first tee. This a par four hole, reasonably short. You drive to a plateau that if you drive it too far, drops off a precipice almost, 398 yards is the distance of the hole. Kind of a crosswind from right to left, I think, Dave. Good starting hole. It might not use a driver here. Uh, some of the players go off in the three wood because just to keep it in the fairway. It's down the right. Didn't look like the wind got that. Nope. But uh, some of the rough did. Hail Bob Rosberg, can you see that? Well, it hit a, somebody in the uh, gallery and stopped it just absolutely dead cold, but in the rough with it is trampled down. Okay. Now, Hale a... Irwin. You can follow this one for us, if you will, Bob. Bob Rosberg, of course, another former PGA champion, is out on the fairways, as Bill Fleming will be and Hollis Stacy, the current and two-time U.S. Women's Open champion. Hail Irwin now. Ball oh, looks a little right. Catches That's the fairway right. though, yep. perfect. As you said, on the right side of the fairway, Tom Weisskopf then, the one in trouble in this final group. And remember, he trails Hale Irwin by three shots. He can't afford early mistakes. No, he's got to put some pressure on him, as the other players do. We didn't mention, like, Jerry Pate, I still think, uh, has an outside chance. And, of course, Tom Pertzer's got to get off to a little better start today. And look at Lee Elder getting back in there. Larry Nelson, David Graham. Okay, let's meet two of our other commentators here from across the sea, Peter Allis, five-time member of the British Ryder Cup team, and Frank Hannigan of the USGA. Let's have a word from them. Well, we're into the last day of this year's championship, and I, for one, am looking forward to what may well be the classic golfing confrontation of 1979. Haley Owen, one of the very best golfers in the world today, against the perhaps unfulfilled but majestic striking Tom Weisskopf, playing in front of his home fans in his home state. One danger, I think, might be for them that they could get into a classic match play situation, and one of the many good players lurking a few strokes behind may just creep in and steal the title. Well, with me today is Frank Hannigan of the USGA, and Frank, it's very noticeable for we observers that on the first day we had nobody breaking 70, on the second day three players managed that, and yesterday nine did. Now, what devilish plans have you lads cooked up overnight? Well, uh, Peter, if you see somebody break 70 today, you will have seen a very, very important round of golf. Yesterday, the course was set up very soft. The expectation was that there would be high wind. We saw some great shots and some very low scores. Today, they had a lot of hole locations that they'd been planning to use throughout the week that they hadn't 
had a chance to use. You'll see them today. Places like on the 3rd and the 5th. You'll really warm your heart. If, if your heart is warmed by balls going into water hazards. Well, well, we've got some uh, freshening breeze as well, so I think this is the, going to be the most difficult day. I think it's going to be a fascinating day, and I hope you'll be with us. Tom Percher on the first hole. This for a birdie, we are told. There you go. Must have had a great second shot. And that brings him back to even par. Four shots out of the lead. Tom Pertzer, who was tied for the lead overnight on Friday, three shots ahead of this man, Hale Irwin. He was tied with Larry Nelson at the time. Both of them fell back yesterday. Nelson fell back further than Pertzer. Pertzer is still very much a contender, particularly with that birdie on the first hole. Well, I talked to him last night, Jim, and he, he just felt like if he could just pull his game together, he'd gotten a bad round out of the way, and it, uh, you don't know in a U.S. Open what may happen, especially as windy as it is, no matter how good a player Hale is or Tom is, uh, anything can happen. Okay, there's a look at that hill that drops straight off the fairway there as you come down to a lower level, but then up again to the green, very much an elevated green. Bob? Tom has caught an absolutely perfect lie. It, uh, just the kind of a break you really need after hitting a tee shot like he did. He's got a very dry lie, mm -hmm. the kind that you can pinch it off of, and with the flag fairly close to the front, and on the left, he's got a good angle to come in from, and he will be able to put something on this ball coming out of the rough. About how long a shot, Rossi? Well, both of them are about 145 yards. In fact, I don't think they have decided who's away yet. It's very, very close. Both when drives are reasonably short. Uh, uh, of course, I don't know if Hale went off of there with a the driver or with a three wood, but Tom's ball hit somebody in the gallery on the fly and stopped dead. Tom will be shooting first. When Bob says you can pinch that ball, Dave, why don't you explain that a little further for us? Well, actually, that's bare ground, and you, you don't have the usual rough or grass around it. You can catch the ball cleanly, and with the firm ground, you can get a lot more spin on a lie like this than you can out of a fairway or, uh, of course, any kind of rough. Got it going right at the middle of the green. Beautiful shot. And yeah, just, a little short. Short. Just isn't up. I'll tell you, uh, he hit it. I, in fact, I believe what happened is that he thought it might fly a little, and it just did, and it came out just like this. It came off of bare, bare dirt. Looks like it's about 10 yards short of the green in some medium tall rough. So now here, Irwin will check the wind again, having witnessed that <laughs> shot by Weisskopf. Well, with that flag so near the front of the green, Jim, uh, Tom left himself, even though you don't want to get above the, the holes here at Inverness, it's, uh, now he doesn't have much green to work with unless he comes up with a good lie short of the green. All right. Now Irwin will hit across the abyss and to the elevated green. It's just a little bit higher than where he stands now. back all right well putting surface but a long way from the hole and so they have almost reached the green on the first hole the two leaders we'll be right back live at Inverness uh, Tom Weisskopf short of the first green third shot and what a difficult one Played it very well indeed. He might, if he had another three or four goes, have got it half as close again. But uh, well played. That's facing a five. We go ahead to the second hole. Tom Pertzer, who started with a very nice three on the first hole to get back to level par. Second shot. This hole, 385 yards. And he's safely on the putting surface. That was in some deep rough there, and uh, he looked like he hit that. That's how they stand, and this is the the final match. Hale Irwin and Tom Weisskopf, and what a battle this!
really does promise to be. Very important, of course, for Irwin to make a good start. A lot of those um, in reasonable contention have not made a good start. So he's not really been pressurised early on by, by players, shall we say, uh, five or six or seven or eight strokes behind him. But very important for him to start with a two-putt here. a very fine putt indeed just leaves him one of those rather horrid ones on the first green when the nerve ends are a little raw but a good first putt from a long way away the opening holes here certainly on paper look rather kind distance wise lengthwise 398 yards 385 yards and then a short hole 185 but time and time again we've seen strokes dropped Sometimes unluckily, sometimes quite uh, wildly. That's the temperature. The wind, you can see, has dropped considerably. It was very strong early on. Rather heavy and muggy. Sniff of thunder about, but we hope that won't appear. Now, Weisskopf. Well, he held seemingly dozens of these yesterday. And this could set the tempo for him for the round. It's quite a long way away. This for a four. And unlucky. Uh, that'll be a five for Weisskopf. Not a bad five, if you get my meeting. The drive was a bit wayward, but the second might have been a little bit misjudged. Not a bad chip. Good-looking putt, but it's a shot gone. Opening hole, drops a shot. Not happy. Now, Irwin, faced with a very important one for him, needs to get a few pars under his belt. He's three strokes ahead. Nobody's really charging at him. Just a little bit off-centre, but that's a very good four indeed. Now to the second. Tom Pertzer, who played a splendid second shot at the first hole of about five or six feet, got his birdie uh, on the second, playing three. Good speed. How about that? Well, well, well. Having hardly finished saying nobody's making a... a a really uh, full-blooded run. Pertzer, who has had some very adventurous golf over the last three days, opens up 3-3 three, three, and is now one under. Let's have a look at that one again. And you, you get the feel of it when the putt's about halfway down, that the speed looks good. If you start looking from ball to hole and judging how it's going to start, and right in the middle. And what a start for Pertzer. 3-3. Three, three. And Weisskopf... Uh, just tapped in that putt of eight or nine inches, but he dropped a stroke. Pertzer has already overtaken him. And the others coming up behind. And Fred Couples was a low amateur. But now here's Hale Irwin. With this match is Bob Rosberg, who will tell us uh, how they're looking when they're on their way. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Right in the middle of the fairway, fairly long. Oh, this hole, 385 yards. The wind has blown <laughs> consistently from the same direction all week. That's uh, a little bit against right to left. There's our little plan of the second hole, pretty straight away. Now, Weisskopf needs some straight hitting, some nice putting and a cool head.
and this is a good drive. Right up the middle of the fairway and very long. Well, that's a splendid drive from Weisskopf, and he's some 15 or 20 yards ahead of Irwin. Now, third tee, Lee Elder, who started at a par but dropped a stroke at the second. Now three over. And that's a good shot. And you can see that pin in... Well, not in one of the easiest positions that I've seen. That great cheer, incidentally, we heard just a few minutes ago it was Jerry Pate, who uh, Dave Ma is very keen on. He got a birdie at the second, so we've got lots of good stuff to come up, and we'll be here to bring it to you. The United States Open Golf Championship, Inverness Club, Toledo, Ohio. This is the second hole participants here at the moment Hale Irwin the leader in the tournament by three shots over Tom Percher Percher having birdied the first two holes Irwin having parred the first Rossi about what kind of shot does he have he's about hundred and thirty yards David I believe he's hitting an eight iron pins on the left and the wind coming directly from right to left like he started out a little right he's got to get up I believe oh it's perfect Oh, yeah, <laughs> I want to tell you. Beautiful shot. Gorgeous shot by Hale Irwin. Bidding for his second U.S. Open championship. That man is very tough, Jim. They're going to have to play to beat him. I don't think Hale will throw anything away. They're going to have to earn it. Tom Weisskopf, what's the wind on this hole, Bob? Across? Yes, it's coming directly across, Jim. Right to left. Right to left. Weisskopf needing a birdie here to get back in the thick of it. He's four shots behind now, having made a one over par five on the first hole. Very, very long, Jim. Completely yeah. over the green on the fly. That sort of thing is the exact opposite of what Tom needed to get off to a good start here today. Trailing by three, he really had to pick up a shot perhaps in the early going instead of which he's going the other way well that's one thing that makes Inverness uh, difficult small greens as you see how the players stand there have you ever seen a gallery give a tremendous ovation to a man in the process of shooting 80 or 81 well that's what happened here just a few minutes ago this of course was the man Arnold Palmer being welcomed at Inverness Isn't that remarkable? He's had a bad day today. Ten over par for the round, coming to the 18th green, but it doesn't matter. We should mention, perhaps at this point, that Arnold Palmer had to qualify to get here this year, and he went out with everybody else with a handicap of two or less and did the job and came here and fought to make the cut. He didn't want to go home at the end of the second day, even though he was not a real contender. There are the standings then. Irwin by three over Tom. Pertzer, who's off to that hot start. Weisskopf and Jerry Pate now even. Pate having birdied the second hole. Some of the others who are lurking in the background. Gary Player, you can never count him out. Fred Couples, by the way, shot 302 total strokes for 72 holes to become the low amateur. The three amateurs who made the cut all have completed their round, so he will win a gold medal and an automatic exemption for the United States Amateur Championship this year. Congratulations to the young man from Seattle, Washington, and the University of Houston. It's always a great honor, isn't it, Frank Hannigan? Oh, yeah, it certainly is. It's a great thrill for young Fred. He grew up playing on a uh, municipally owned golf course, Jefferson Park in, uh, in Seattle, Washington. He tied for the Southwest Conference uh, title this year, in part, if you happen to win it, part of it was an exemption to Colonial, and the man that he tied with, or the youngster, was a senior, so Fred said, why don't we play off? And so one of us gets to go, and he lost the playoff, which was a great sporting thing for him to do for the senior. Here's the third hole, Tom Pritzer. I look now at the crowd gathering around 18, but this is 185 yard, par three with a little water hazard there. This is one of the new holes put in by George and Tom Fazio. Good shot. All right, look at the draw back. We certainly have an opportunity. 
least uh, another birdie. See the flag being whipped there? When uh, Peter said a while ago the wind had come down from what it was, uh, we don't mean, mean to mislead you. It is not weak at all. As a matter of fact, the wind even now is considerably stronger than it was yesterday. And, it, and you're with the wind on that hole. We watch it. Weiskopf here with his third shot at the second hole. Which is a par four, so Tom in trouble at the second after having made a bogey at the first. These to me are the hardest shots to try to play when you're a little bit nervous. I frankly couldn't see where that was. Uh, Bob Rosberg, could you see that or are you moving on to the next hole? I am not there, Jim. Okay. Well, he bumped it, evidently tried to bump it into the fringe, uh, Rossi, and it's st he's oh. still well short of the green. It got in that high grass and just stopped. Oh, this could be the beginning of a most unfortunate day for Tom Weisskopf. On the other hand, we've seen open championships where at the end of the front nine looked like it was all over and then it just <laughs> turned around. Remember the PGA Championship last year? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Well the importance of the proper club. Now, Tom has either missed club twice or something happened, but you missed both those greens with short irons, relatively short irons, and uh, that's the thing. It's mean. The U.S. Open is mean things happen to you when you play. How's everything? He's got to go some to make a five here. He certainly does. Lying three now on the par four hole. And he's not on the putting surface, as you can see. You can see just at the top there, the, see how the ball is sitting down. This is the difficult part. How is that ball going to react to coming out of there? You never are quite sure. We also hear people passing the time of day back there. That's a wonderful, mm. wonderful mm. shot there. Pulled up just a little to make it still nothing but automatic make this next one. He's going to be lucky not to lose at least two shots to Hale here because Hale has this uh, putt for a birdie three. That's right. Irwin, as you see, four under for the tournament and even par for today's round after one hole. We're following them all the way from the first tee to the 18th green in the U.S. Open. It's live. And there are the leaders. Some of them. Irwin made a very good putt for a par on the first hole, if you've just joined us. This looks like about the same length. Mm -hmm. Golf can be funny. If you miss that first one, then this one looks more difficult. Now you made the first one, now you've already made one, so you're not on a blitz at this point. <laughs> Touch of loose grass. You know, see, that's what I, I would think he'd step away there. Remember when Sanders didn't step away that time at the British Open? Mm -hmm. Step back and then gather yourself again and go up and address the ball and putt it. And now it's a four-shot lead for Hale Irwin, a birdie at the second hole. He goes to five under for the tournament, one under for the day. Up ahead of him, Tom Pertzer, who is still red hot, remember, having birdied the first two holes, but he's got a four-shot lead on Pertzer. Now, let's go to young Tom. Pertzer at one under, started the day one over. He'll be attempting his third consecutive birdie of the day. You had a little talk with him last night. You kind of... Settle him down a little bit, Dave? Well, I just didn't want him to be discouraged. He's such a nice young man, and I, I just said, come on, you still have a chance to win. The bad round's out of the way. Now, don't go out and play golf like you can play golf. Mm, my. Ooh. Oh. Mm. Too far off. Tom Weisskopf got his bogey five at the second hole. Now drops to one over par. Started the day one under. That's too bad. I thought Tom might get off to a little better start, but let's don't be <laughs> saying anything yet. There's a long way between here and the clubhouse. How often have those of you at home who are golfers started off winning the first two holes and losing the match? Almost as often as not. Yeah, but <laughs> you can press, Jim. You can start <laughs> a new bet. This is just all <laughs> true. Jerry Pate, some of the statistics on him. Jerry has picked up one birdie today. He's in 
even par. Third place, five shots behind. What a great golf swing he's got. He's just a marvelous player. Now he got a little idea, too, about that break here at the hole. It just purchase broke very sharply to the left. Yeah, he allowed for a little more. Let's see. All right. Jim, the game is on. Yes, indeed. Just a marvelous putt, but as you indicated, Dave, he did have the benefit of schooling, and he went to school very efficiently. So Jerry Pete now tied for second place, one under par. He's had two birdies in a row. Pertzer needs this for a par. He's had his two birdies. You can see the wind rippling the water in that little pond. Well, the only thing in the player's favor is the hole plays a little shorter than it's 185 because it's downwind. But if you look, you don't have to miss it but about 15 feet and you'll be dropping it over your shoulder shooting three. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, it takes a lot of courage to hit the ball in there that close to the hole. And a good shot, obviously. There's Hale Irwin on the tee waiting for Pertzer to finish up. Well, he certainly knows that Jerry Pates made a birdie then. He was standing there watching him. He said he liked the fact that he was able to watch Weisskopf yesterday, even though Weisskopf was hot and making those putts. All right, the par three for Tom Pertzer. Keeps him at one under for the tournament. He and Jerry Pate then, his fellow competitor of the day, four shots behind Hale Irwin. Good strong starts there. 3-3-3 three, yep. three, three for Pertzer. 4-3 for Hale. And they move on to the next hole, opening it up for Hale Irwin and Tom Weisskopf. Hale with the wind at his back, remember. One thing he's, one thing you know he's thinking about is you must not miss this shot to the right, no matter what you do. That is a big gallery when you figure there are a lot of other people with other groups still at this point in the competition. It's a hard enough hole with the lake there, Jim, but at least you have a place you can bail out to the left if you miss it. It's uh, just inexcusable to the player if he would happen to miss it to the right here. Downwind, of course, harder to curve the ball. Aim right at the middle of the green and just make a good swing. 185 yards downwind. There it goes. Bite, bite, bite. I heard somebody holler bite and he's going over. Back left. Well, that's where you got to go. Uh, look, man has a four-shot lead. You, you, you can make a few mistakes. You can't start to play safe. That's too early. Two. Wind still whipping the flag. As Tom Weisskopf will have his turn, and now he must wonder how much club to use. Bob Rusper, do you have any idea what clubs they're using there? I would imagine that Hale hit a six iron, uh, mm -hmm. Jim, and I, I would think that depending upon the kind of shot Tom's playing, he's either going to hit a seven real hard or try and cut a six in. The wind is really blowing from behind him. Very difficult to get the ball close. All right. Bertrand Pate managed to get on it's the going right, right side at it. Oh. You can see the bounce that ball took. Boy, if it Both carried goals. a little further, Jim, it would have been a real good shot. Bad shape there, Jim. Okay. Both of them over the green on the third. We'll be back live at Inverness. And that's how they stand as we look at this third green at Inverness. Irwin and Weisskopf both through the green. There's Sandy Tatum there with the white hat president of the United States Golf Association and I suspect it looks as if there's some ruling being made we have Frank Hannigan with us Frank have you any knowledge of this or not what could be happening I would recognize what what could have been happening is that oh, his, his ball came to rest on a spectator's blanket uh, blanket is an obs a movable obstruction he gets to drop the ball without penalty now he's dropped it since it's rolled apparently more than two club lengths uh, at least it appears to us that way, he must drop it again. Now, 
The configuration of the ground suggests that that's exactly what's going to happen the second time. So this time he will place the ball exactly where it's touched the ground when it was dropped the second time. And that's why you see Sandy Tatum over there bending over to your left, pointing to the spot. That's where Hale's placing it now. And remember, no penalty was involved. The next will be his second shot. Very carefully placing it too, of course, because uh, I suppose under the sort of rules of equity, uh, he shouldn't have too good a lie, nor should he have too bad a lie. Well, he, it's, it's just the spot. It's also possible that when the ground is, is worn down very heavily from traffic on a slope, that the ball won't come to rest anywhere on such a slope. In that case, they'd have to move around and play a game until he could place it somewhere, the nearest place available, no nearer the hole where it will, in fact, remain still. And they seem still to be having a problem about that. Well, they're being very precise, but then uh, this is the championship, and uh, this is the, the precise ruling and the way it should be done. Looks as if they've now got the ball back on the ground, and it's staying put. Hale Irwin uh, comes up onto the green. Quite a bit of green downhill. Bob Rosberg's there. What sort of chip shot, Bob? He has a shot that is going to come away from him very quickly, and you saw the putts of, uh, of Pate earlier, Peyton Purchase, that the ball will come very quickly from right to left and very quickly away from him, so he really has a hard shot. And, of course, the water just beyond, if he happened to, to top it, to scull it, uh, it could easily scuttle over the green and go down into the water, I presume. It's a possibility, Peter, but he'd have to hit it pretty badly to get it there. Well, that's the shot he's got as the wind starts to rise again. Gusting quite slow. Look at all the periscopes there, people peering over the top. As Irwin decides now whether he's going to just pitch it short and let it ease its way over the top of the hill. Remember yesterday from, from over the back of this green, not so far away, he actually chipped it into the hole for a two. Well, he'd be very happy with a three today. going a bit and gone 12 14 feet past and that's probably as good as he could do this is the fourth Tom Pertzer started 3-3-3 three, three, three. and just gets on the green this fourth hole one of the most difficult uh, Pate way down playing his second Hooking it up and over. Hollis Stacy is there. Hollis, that was a bit of a wayward drive from Mr. Pate. He was in the left rough. He had a baseball lie with his ball above his feet. And it uh, looked like he just hit it short of the green. Yes, he's short of the little stream that runs across in front of the green. But back to Weisskopf, who's over there and down among the spectators. And he looks to be putting it. Well now, well now. Up over the bare hill. <laughs> what a good effort that is. It shows you. You've got to think the shot out. Tom decided that the ground was bare enough that he could just bumble it and bobble it up the hill. And uh, well, he's got it quite close. Now Irwin, who's four strokes ahead of Pate and Pertzer, lining up his uh, 12 or 14 foot putt for a par. On this course already taking a tremendous toll on some of the players. Rod Funseth, a very fine player indeed, took 45 strokes for the first nine holes and he was only eight over, suddenly 18 over. All sorts of things can happen here. Jack Nicholas putting in a rush. He's uh, three under today, but of course was ten over yesterday, though back to seven over. But this is the leader, Hale Irwin, putting for a three on the third. Oh. Oh, always left. Take your time. 
That's all right. You've got to be philosophical about it. He started the equivalent of uh, three pars. Par, birdie, bogey. That's all right. Mustn't get cross with yourself. Patience. Keep playing. Keep thinking. Don't waste shots. Now, Weisskopf. This, I think, I feel is a very important putt for Tom. He's... Uh, misjudged or mishit a uh, couple of shots so far in this round he hasn't hit a green in regulation figure yet this to stop the rot though slightly this for a par three yes well done well that'll make him feel a little better and his fans a little happier but uh, well, he's there, you can see, lying was one over par. The elder dropped a stroke at the second. He, he started the day at two over. Larry Nelson dropped a stroke at the first. He's now three over. Third shot now at the fourth hole, and it's Jerry Pate. Flipping it up and over and coming round. And what a beauty. chance for his par four that's the hole you see the bunkers down the right elevated green there's the tee then they drive through the trees up into the up into that area and a longish second this holds 466 yards uphill takes a good iron to reach it. Now, there's Irwin and Weisskopf. Quite a good walk back from the third green to the fourth tee. And the next few holes are going to be very crucial, I feel, for both players, because the fourth and the fifth have been playing uh, pretty well as difficult, or the most difficult, on the course. Yesterday, the 5th, 14th, 4th, 6th, ninth, and 7th were the most difficult holes. And up ahead, on the 4th, Tom Pertzer, who started birdie, birdie, par. That's 3-3-3, three, 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 which makes the scorecard look very neat. Putts at the 4th, a long one. Very fast, down and across the slope. Looks to have a good touch. It couldn't do it again. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, he just adds another three to the score. And if he keeps doing that for about another 14 holes, well, we really will have something for the record books, Frank Hadigan. That's a pretty good start for the young man who was a bit wild yesterday, but my word, 3-3-3-3 three, 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 three today. 3-3-3, three, 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 three. it reminds you, you know, it's very unerwin. It's very... Just watch it again, Frank. You, you watch it this time and see what you think of it. Good pace, it looks slow, it comes down, gathering speed, and then suddenly disappeared. It hit the hole. <laughs> it hit the hole and disappeared, and what a start for the young man. Well, Irwin watched Weisskopf yesterday battling away and holding putts all over the place, and looks as if he's in the same sort of situation today. Bob Rosberg perfect drive. Been watching those two. Bob, a good drive. Yes, perfect drive by Hale Irwin. Weisskopf is driven in the left-hand rough and looks to be very deep. Well, the battle begins to warm up. That's how they stand. We'll be back at Inverness after these messages. We're covering them from start to finish at the U.S. Open, and now the leader, Hale Irwin, is on the fourth hole, a 466-yard par four. His lead, which was three when the day began, has dwindled to two, but not over the man he led by three, over a man he led by five. Irwin now by two over young Tom Pertzer, who has had threes on all of the first four holes. 
constituting three birdies and one par. Now Irwin with his second shot. That how far away is he, Ross? It's about 200 yard shot, David. I believe he has a three iron. Against the overcast sky, no immediate threat of rain yet. Could come later. Beautiful shot right in the middle of the green. Yep. It looks to be just a little bit inside of where Tom was, where he made his putt a moment ago. Tom Pertzer. Mm -hmm. Tom Weisskopf, meanwhile, in, in trouble on this hole. Weisskopf has a very nasty lie, Jim. He's got it very deep. The one thing going for him is that the grass is laying toward the hole. I think you'll see Tom take a very lofted club and swing very hard at it to be sure the ball gets up in the air quickly. We had a quick look at Jerry Pate walking off the next tee and now to Tom Weisskopf in trouble. You can see he hit it very hard. It's going right at the hole, if it's enough. Get up. You heard somebody say, get up. It almost did, but just short, as you see. But you're always a little off balance. He hasn't yet hit a green. Short at one, over at two, long at three, short at four. While we were gone for a couple of minutes there, Jerry Pate had this putt, if you remember, for a par on the fourth hole, a very important putt. He had scrambled his way up to the green. A little pitch shot, the third was excellent, and this one, as it developed, was just fine. Okay, uh, Pate with a pressure par. Kept him at one under for the tournament, three shots out of the lead. He and his playing companion, Tom Percher, then went to the fifth tee. This was just a matter of seconds ago. This is Tom. probably a three wood, Jim. Mm -hmm. It's not a driver. It's not a hole that requires length. You've got to try to keep it down the left side here. It's another one of the new holes, 401 yard par four with a creek along the right. There it is on the fairway. Looks perfect. Okay. Now back to the tee again to Jerry Pate. It's real exciting part about this hole is uh, even after you've hit a good drive, is your second shot. We'll get a look at that shot in a minute. Pate, former U.S. Amateur Champion, former U.S. Open Champion, and he's still only 25 years old. Seemed to have lashed that one from the outcries in the gallery, but he lashed it left, as you little, see. A little too far left in his effort to keep it left. Overdid it. Now back to the live picture on the fourth green where Tom Weisskopf is surveying his situation. Remember, he came up a little bit short here. On the last hole, he used a putter from way off the green. You think he'll use it here? I, I don't think so, Jim. He's got a little bit different kind of shot here. Right. Before he was on the bare ground, putting up over hill and then downhill. This uh, chip, a little bit more in his favor. He's sitting up, it looks all right. And of course, he's pitching up the hill. So he'll take some lofted club, probably an eight iron, nine iron or wedge and play the shot. His third shot on the par four hole. Weisskopf now at one over for the tournament, two over on today's round. He's five shots out of the lead. It's Irwin by two over Pertzer, by three over Pate, by five over Weisskopf. Delicate little shot. Mm. Now Tom Pertzer back live with him. He saw his tee shot on the fifth hole. Hollis Stacy is with that groove. Is that wind still whipping up out there? Uh, the wind is really whipping up right here and I've seen the last two groups go by and it, it's just blowing it from right over the pin to the left side of the green. So he's going to have to hit about a four iron and aim right of the green. Well, you know, Hollis, what the Scots say, they say if there's nay wind and nay rain, there's nay golf. Well, we don't have the rain, and we're ho hoping we don't get it, but we sure have the wind, and it's an innate part of golf, isn't it, Dave? It certainly is, <laughs> and it takes a lot of nerve to aim out just in the right-hand side of your screen as a lake, and, and if he's going to aim out there, which you have to do if you're going to knock the ball close to the hole. Yeah, you can see it with the flag blowing right to left. You can get the whole picture. It looked as though it started left, though. Mm-hmm. Yep, he did, I'm sure he didn't like it's that. It's gone left. And the wind will take it further left, of course, and he is off the green. There you see the ball right there, right where that marshal in the yellow shirt and the yellow pith helmet is standing. Now back to Hale Irwin. This is 
attempt at a birdie on the fourth hole. The tournament leader. Mm. Leaving himself quite, quite a little number coming back. Now you realize what a great putt Pertzer made on that hole. Here's Pate out in the veldt. <laughs> yeah. Up over his shoes. A little better angle to come in, but you've got to be sure the ball doesn't squirt too much, and that looked as though it started left. Hollis, it's did it? It's going left. He was in some deep rough, and it, it's in the left bunker. In the left bunker is Jerry Pate, just when he was going along very well. Well, if you make a mistake, you can't go right there. There's where the water is. That's a quick six. This way, you probably won't make any more than five if you make a mistake. So Hale Irwin is probably not aware of the fact that the two closest pursuers are in trouble up ahead. He's, they're not within sight of him at the moment. Tom Weisskopf needs this, as you see, for the par. Scrambled on the last hole, scrambling again. Hit it. And again, oh. successfully. All right. Par four for Tom Weisskopf, keeping him at one over, two over on today's round. Five shots behind, but there's such a long way to go. Remember, normally uh, you aren't watching golf tournaments at home where there are 14 holes left to go. It's usually three or four. 14 uh, holes with, filled with terror. That's sheer stark terror. Now Irwin must make sure of his. Well, he has an idea. He's not on the same line that Tom Weisskopf was on, but basically down below the hole, the ball shouldn't break too much. Just Keep it in the right side, hit a solid putt. And so he remains just about. <laughs> All uh, right. In what our well-remembered departed colleague, Henry Longhurst, used to call the tradesman's entrance, <laughs> always remember? Yes. Well, there you see the lead at two shots for Hale Irwin over Tom Percher, three over Jerry Pate, but Percher and Pate both in trouble up ahead on the fifth hole. Some of the other players who still hope to get something going. Gary Player is still in there at plus four. Fred Couples, once again, was the low amateur. The three amateurs who made the cut are all in, and he was the low. Now back up ahead on the fifth. A survey trip for Pate. It's the kind of shot that he has, Jim. You want to go in the, in the bunker with the idea of, of a positive thought. The wind is going to help you because it's against you. You don't want to be looking at that lake and thinking, oh, my goodness, let's don't hit it in the lake. <laughs> well, you see so many of your weekend players get up and say, oh, that's what, what I'd be what thinking. I don't want to hit it in the lake. Well, think of it in a positive way. If he has a good lie, I can't tell uh, how his lie is there. Hollis, did you get a chance to look at it? Well, maybe not. Uh, thing here is go ahead and play the shot you know as though he can't get a stance his ball may be on a little bit of a downslope that's Jim. what it looks like it could be I was gonna say and he could even have a problem on the backswing with that bank the way that lip sticks out mm-hmm sure could huh? and then then he's really got a dangerous situation because the ball will come out lower and faster than your average trap shot then the professional also starts worried about the lake oh yes that's Got to have those alarms go off when there's something funny going on. See, it came out low. Mm -hmm. Should run some. Good shot. Good shot. Didn't want it to go much further. That water is not very far away when you get to the edge of this green. Look at the way they go. Look, still going. Well, the ball acted as though it might have been buried. I, mm -hmm. I, I kind of feel that the ball was buried there, and he didn't play too bad a shot. <laughs> that thing moved another 10 feet after I thought it had quit. Certainly did. Hale Irwin standing on this tee. He might have been able to see that shot, although it's kind of around the corner. I don't think he can see it. I just mentioned that because he made a point yesterday after his round of saying that it really pleased him that he could see Weisskopf up ahead and Weisskopf playing well. He said that it kind of turned him on, made him determined. He knew what he had to do. But well, he has that situation with Kurtzer and Pate right now, but he can't see them at this moment. Well, it made, it made Hale play aggressively yesterday while the, the two youngsters who were leading the tournament, I'm sure because of the pressure and so forth, were a little tentative. Now, uh, Pertzer's come out today and become an aggressive player. Mm -hmm. so third round is generally the one where you, a lot of times a young player lets the pressure, well, it doesn't let the pressure get him. I mean, it just happens. You have to go through that a few times to get the experience in order to 
achieve what this man right here has done. Leader by two. And he has cut it right down the middle of the fairway. It's just a beautiful drive. Coming right on the corner. Well, just in the in just the edge of the rough, but it looks like a good lie, doesn't it, Bob? Yeah. The gallery streaming along. Here is Lon Hinkle. Lon Hinkle was the man who became famous by finding a short way home on the eighth hole. Remember, playing over the 17th fairway, up over the trees and back, and thereby inspiring the USGA to put in a brand new 25-foot spruce tree, whereupon he went over a couple more times. Lon Hinkle, who comes in today, he did not have a, uh, a very good day. As a matter of fact, 10 over par, 81, we're told. Yeah, you keep trying to go against that spruce there at the eighth hole, you might shoot a million. That's right. He kept doing it even after they planted a tree. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hinkle's spruce. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Jerry's ball ran against the taller part of the fringe there, Jim. We'll see. Leaves you an awkward sort of shot because you don't know whether to putt, to chip. Let's see what Jerry does. Can't tell what kind of club he's got yet. Looks like he's chipping it. Yeah. Would you? Well, I don't know. It, it shot changes mm, each time. See, you that. can't get a, you can't be sure you're going to get the club on the ball. It, it, that's a shot. It, it's if indecision is in your mind, more often than not, you'll miss it. You'll do just what Jerry did there. What's against the using the putter there? Nothing. Uh, you see, players use a yep. sandwich there and use it like a putter which is a shot that you would never dump, just, just as Jerry did. That way you would not put the club down into the grass and then hit behind it and scuff the shot. Jerry paid in real danger of taking a double bogey six here. Most costly to him. He has fought his way to minus one for the tournament, only three shots out of the lead, and now it, here it begins to at least temporarily trickle away, shot by tiny shot. Needing this for five. When you play an open course, the things that seem to eat you up are the double bogeys. If, if you can just hold it to a bogey, then you might make a birdie somewhere and make that up. But when you start making doubles and you've got to make two for one, you, you're losing ground. Big putt for him here. Won the U.S. Open at the Atlanta Athletic Club in his native state of Georgia. Also the native state of Hollis Stacey, the U.S. Women's Open champion, who is following this couple. A little oh. left. Oh. Now needing that one for six, two over par and one hole. Not what you want in the U.S. Open. You get to the final round of the Open, sometimes it almost seems there's an unseen force that sort of decides when the screws shall be tightened, <laughs> when to let them run a little bit. Tom Pertzer, you remember, was also off the putting surface, but he has pitched up to here, so he lies three on the par four hole, needing this for par. Meanwhile, out on the fairway, Hale Irwin and Tom Weisskopf can only wait. Two tall figures there on the fairway, both built very well for this game willowy and yet strong men. Tom's six feet, 385, although he told me yesterday that earlier this year when he had that ulcer that I don't think he told too many people about really, Dave. When he had that ulcer, he said he lost about 20 pounds, was down to 170. Hmm. Well, he's the kind of guy that does keep a lot of things inside of him and seems to worry quite a bit. So I'm not being a doctor at all, I assume that's what helps cause those things. Now, he may have an idea. He's almost on the same line that Jerry Pate was on, just the opposite side of the hole. So I'm sure Tom was watching that. This putt is very fast. He's going downhill. Looks like a nice Better hit the hole. Shoe. Good touch, though. 
He'll have that one for the bogey five that will put him at one under par. Dropping him three shots again behind Irwin. But then Irwin will have his shot at this green. He did not see that Pertzer and Pete both went left and had their problems. Well, I'm sure he knows it, though, Jim. By now he but knows it. But, I mean, he didn't have the benefit of seeing their shot and what happened to it. No. Yep. Now, remember, Pate is not yet in in six. And I believe you can hear the wind as it gusts up yet again. Rain threat still holding off. Doesn't look like it could rain within a half an hour, an hour or so. I hope I, hope I don't wish I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it better not happen after you said that. Now Irwin, 34 years old. One time NCAA collegiate golf champion. U.S. Open winner at Wingfoot five years ago. Non-winner of a tournament since 1977 at San Antonio. And yet last year, he won more money than anybody had ever won in a single year without winning a tournament, almost 200000 He told me that he, he just felt as though he's, he's been unlucky. When he played well, one of the other players just played a stroke or two better. It was never the same guy beating him all the time, but his best effort was never quite good enough. To beat the whole field, I mean. Yeah. He's in the shortcut of the rough. Mm -hmm. Looking as though it started fairly straight. All good. right, good shot. Good shot. Very nicely done. The leader on the green. On the fifth hole. Thirteen more to go. We're going to have a look at Jack Nicholas right now on the 16th fairway. He started the day at 10 over. <laughs> he's gotten back to six over. In other words, he's four under on today's round. Pars in from here would give him a 67. Too late, but just perhaps a gentle reminder from Jack that those who say, gee, is the Nicholas era over, perhaps are premature. I would, uh, I'm here to tell you they're premature. He finished just a stroke back at Augusta. That's and, right. Uh, didn't get off to a good start here. And soon we'll see him again in the British Open Championship where he'll be the defender at Royal Lytham and St. Anne's in England this year. A home game for Peter Alice. 16th hole is a 405 yard par four. The ever present Angelo Argia, caddy of Nicholas. Okay, there's Jack obviously playing extremely well today. Let's take a break and then come back to Inverness. Well, the fifth green, and Tom Weisskopf once again has failed to hit his second shot onto the prepared surface. Over the back, just kneeling down. There he is. And once again, the old trusty putter comes out from just off the green. Weisskopf, long putt, and very quick indeed, but full of confidence. His man is holding the flag. Good speed. Oh, look at it quicken up though and go by six feet. Now the sixth and Tom Pertzer in sand off the tee. This six hole just 200, 205 yard. Our three. And he's a long, long way away from the hole. Pertzer who started off so brilliantly with four threes. Trouble at the fifth, and now in trouble at the sixth. Now, so Furtzer marks. We'll go back to the fifth. As Halo Wind just kneeling at the back of the green, played that very good second shot from the light rough safely onto the green. If you can get on the greens here at Inverness, 
basically you're never far from the hole. Certainly if you could drop your ball down in the middle of every one of these greens. You'd uh, be having, of course, a very accurate round, but you would not be very far from the hole. This looks a pretty quick one as well. Irwin is four under. There's Jack Nicholas on the left, who's really been turning it on for the fans today. He's got that putt on the left, Jack Nicholas at the 16th for a three. And Irwin has jets drone away overhead. Putts on the fifth. There's Irwin's on the way, beginning to turn. Coming round. Will it go? Will it go? Will it go? Just half an ounce more. And it would have been right to the hole. Now Nicholas on the left. That familiar style. Aimed it well left. Will it turn? No, overborrowed. Turn too late. It looks like a par four for Nicholas. Oops. Four under par for today's round. Six over for the championship. So Irwin, three ahead of Pertzer. Let's see, have a word now from uh, Jim McKay behind the 18th green. Well, Peter, we're well aware that today people will be coming in late, perhaps leaving us for a little bit, coming back again. So we're going to try to give you periodic updates. If you've just joined us, it's a, an overcast day, but there's no immediate threat of rain. It's hot temperature in the mid-80s now. It's gone up a bit in the last hour again. And it's very windy, windier than yesterday, just about as windy as it was here on Friday. Now, the leaders teed off the last pair just about an hour and 15 minutes ago. At that time, uh, it was Hale Irwin with a three-shot lead over Tom Weisskopf. Well, right now, he still has a three-shot shot lead, but not over Weisskopf. Young Tom Percher, who started the day at one over par, as Peter indicated, birdied three of the first four holes. He started off with four threes, one of them being a par three, of course, and uh, crept to within two shots of Hale Irwin. Now, however, Irwin back again by three over Percher, by five over Jerry Pate and Tom Weisskopf. The other leaders you may be following, well, they're playing rather steadily. Uh, people like Lee Elder and Larry Nelson still at three over par, Gary Player at four over par, on down the line. Now, Jack Nicholas has crept up to six over par and is on the leaderboard. Irwin for the par now. Weisskopf already has his on the scorecard or in the process of being put there. Nicholas did par the 16th, remain four under. And look at this, look at this. Now the leader has faltered. He'll now need that for a bogey five. He had a good opportunity at least at a birdie here. Hit the green very nicely in regulation. But these are the greens of Inverness. Just as fast as they could possibly be without being totally unfair. And so the bogey five. Where Hale Irwin, and he kind of stabbed at that ball as he picked it out of the, out of the um, cup. Well, that drops him back to three under par, and his lead has now shrunk to one to two over Tom Percher. But Percher, as you know, is in trouble up ahead. I think that kind of brings us up to date pretty much on the United States Open Golf Championship. We have a long way to go, two hours and about 35 minutes, or to conclusion. We don't have to worry about the time. Of course, we'll be here until it's over. Back to you, Peter. Thank you, Jim. And this is Pertzer on the sixth green. This is for a four, a one over par four. That's safely done, but a stroke dropped by Pertzer, who uh, goes back to level. Well, there's lots more good golf to come, and we'll be here following it. And don't go far away. We'll be back. The gallery begins to grow at Inverness as we come to you live around the 18th green, but most of it, of course, is still out on the golf course with the leaders and with some of their other favorites. The leader at the moment, Hale Irwin, still by three over Tom Percher. He started the day at three. It's at three again. By four over Tom Pate and Jerry Weisskopf. By six over Lee Elder, playing very steady par golf. He's had just one bogey on today's round. Now we're on the 18th green with Lee Trevino, twice a U.S. Open champion, most recently when he beat Jack Nicholas in that head-to-head -head playoff at Murrayan, remember? Not too many years ago. Watch this putt break, left to right, Jim, and watch how quick it is if it doesn't go in the hole. When it goes by there... There it comes. Great <laughs> look at, look at, look at that. putt. Ooh. That was for 
<laughs> birdie three. <laughs> uh, he always remembers somehow that it is, after all, a game, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And little trivia for you. He is the second leading money winner of all time. That's a very interesting statistic. People that. are surprised to hear that in just 12 short years. One has to think that he'll be back in contention and perhaps winning at least one or more major championships in his lifetime. Same age as Jack Nicklaus, 39. Here's Gary Player now. He's on the 11th hole at four over for the tournament. That's one under for the day. He could yet play himself back into it. There's his caddy, Rabbit Dyer. That's the touch well. A little more. A little short. He has one of the great touches around the greens, though. Well, not only that, he doesn't give up, even when he's playing bad. He keeps trying. He keeps his senses about him, and that saves a lot of shots. Rather than getting angry and looking back, I mean, that's history already. He keeps looking ahead. And here is Tom Pritzer. Tom Pritzer, 27 years old. On this Father's Day, he is one, the only one of the leaders, I believe, who is not a father. And... Uh, Married, however, and here is a man who is the father of a good many. Jack Nicholas, second shot on the 17th hole. He is four under for the day. The 17th hole, another of the long par fours here, 431 yards, but you hit down to the green on 17. Great hole, severe green here. If you go by the hole, it's maybe the fastest green here. 17 or 18, one of them's got to be the fastest. Okay. Down towards the 17th green. And I believe he's found trouble. I don't know whether he was in that bunker or in the longish grass. But there was a definite groan from the crowd. It's not in the sand, so he's gone in the rough. Somewhere around the 17th green has Jack Nicholas, but now back to Pertzer again. As we said, in second place at even par. The first two days here, he was all over the golf course and yet scrambled his way to a tie for the lead with Larry Nelson. Yesterday he was all over the golf course again and it caught up with him. He dropped back. Today he's hitting the ball much straighter. And Hollis Stacy is out there. Hollis, have you had a chance to look at Tom's line the rough there? I sure have. He's driven it in the left rough, which is the toughest rough on the golf course. He's got about a seven or eight iron. Playing conservatively, he'll just be playing for bogey here. Looks as though it's a little indecision. This is a great par four, Jim. 452 yards with that creek in front of the tee, which shouldn't come into play, and then down the right side of the fairway and shooting up to this green. There's not a single bunker on this hole, and yet it's one of the great holes in golf. It simply needs no bunkers to make it <laughs> difficult. <though. laughs> it's hard enough. Yeah. Birds are coming up. How's it look, Alice? I can't see it, but they, well, it's short. Up it's short. We have a look at it now. Thank you anyway. Just a little bit short, Tom Pritzer, and he probably will be able to use the putter from there. He's very close to the green. Not, not a bad shot from where he was. Nope. Now Jerry Pate, Jerry Pate, who is four shots off the lead, tied for third with Tom Weisskopf. It's a four-way battle for the U.S. Open Championship at the moment. Lurking behind those four, Gary Player is the next closest, along with Larry Nelson and Lee Elder, all of them hanging at four over. Gary Player parred the 11th hole we were watching him play a minute ago. Remaining then four over for the tournament, one under for the day. Pate. held on to his concentration despite the double bogey, the two over par that he made back there. Well, you got to keep going. You can't look back at that double bogey. That's, uh, he's still not very far away, and you can't tell what Hale's going to do, so keep trying. Now to the sixth hole again. This is the 220-yard par three. Hale, that's Hale Irwin, of course. There he is. Putting four. A birdie. He 
hear the wind noise. Now, the putting touch doesn't seem to be quite what it was on the first couple of holes for Hale, and it does tend to come and go like that. Just about a minute, we'd like to take you behind the scenes a little bit, uh, in about a minute, we're going to be joined by a live audience of a good many million in Great Britain. And when that happens, you'll hear Peter Alice come in and say something like, you know, well, here we are, and so forth. He'll be opening the program for the BBC. And, of course, they'll be with us all the rest of the way. Very glad to have them, as we did yesterday. All right. Now the 12th tee and Gary Player. This is the one par three on the back nine, 167 yards. He sure had the line on that one, oh, baby. Look at that. He had the line yesterday when he made an ace at, at the third hole. Right. Certainly has a chance for a birdie there. Don't quite count Gary Player out. We'll be keeping an eye on him as we have been. Irwin by three over Pertzer. Again, four over Peyton Weisskopf. Seven now over Player, Elder, and Nelson. We're at the U.S. Open and we're live. And welcome by satellite to our golfing friends in Great Britain. And that's the situation at the Inverness Club, the United States Open Championship. It's very exciting at the moment, Halo, when you can see still ahead by three strokes, but Tom Pertzer, a young player, started off with four threes. Only one of those was a par three. That really did get things going. Jack Nicklaus uh, coming back to form. He's uh, four under par at the moment, although he started the day at 10 over. There's much, much going on here. Fred Couples was a low amateur, so he gets the gold medal and he will automatically get exemption into the amateur championship. It's hot, it's muggy, there has been a threat of thunder. It's very exciting, a marvelous crowd here and a feast of marvelous golf. Here's Tom Pertzer. Well, this is Jim McKay with Dave Marr. We'd also like to welcome our British audience and we'll try to keep our speech as free of American accent as possible. There's Tom Pertzer now. From off the green, his birdie attempt coming up short. Tom went 3-3-3-3, three, 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 birdieing three of the first four holes. Since then, he's been a little more human. And he's at even par for the tournament, still one under for the day. If you're not familiar with Tom, now we'll be back to him. Let's go to... Jack Nicholas now needing this for a par on the 17th hole to stay four under for the day and six over for the tournament. A round of four under would be 67 and would tie for the low round of this championship. 67s were turned in yesterday by Hale Irwin and Tom Weisskopf. This tournament is sort of uh, typical for Jack in the last few years with the exception of his win last year at the Open. Uh, in that he seems to play only on one day a week, on Sunday afternoon, it seems. Always on it's Sunday. Just sort of indifferent uh, scores, Thursdays and Fridays. One time, one time. Oh. No, so if he makes that one, it'll be a bogey five here, and we'll drop him to seven over for the tournament, three under on today's round, and he'll have one more hole to play. We go to the seventh tee again, and for the first time for our British friends, this is probably the most difficult hole on the golf course. One of the fine holes in American golf, 452 yards long, a par four. You see there's a creek that meanders along the right, cuts in at one point, and uh, so difficult that Dave Marr pointed out a couple of minutes ago, it needs no bunkers at all. There's not one sand bunker on this hole. And that too may be why it's a little harder. Sometimes you have a bunker, Jim, just to show you which way to go or what to avoid. It's hard to get your line a lot of times on a hole like this. The creek does come out on the right side, but with a good drive, you can knock it, you can carry that part of the creek. Right. There's Irwin. Even par for the day. Excuse me, one over for the day. Looks a little left. Press yep. It. Yes, that ball's way left in the very, very deep rough and quite short. It's funny, the wind has turned around just in the last couple of minutes and is actually blowing into the players. Ooh, well, that brings that uh, creek into play then. Yes, it sure does. Again, to continue to identify our commentary team for our overseas viewers who've just joined us, that was Bob Rosberg, who's out on the fairway. He's moving along with this pairing of Weisskopf and Irwin. 
former PGA champion himself. Weisskopf apparently three putted the last hole. He was on the green a tremendous distance from the hole, but since he's shooting last, he must have made bogey. Yes, he's two over now. We're just going to report that. He's hit a good drive here. Perfect. Well, five shots out of the lead. He needs a few of those to get back into it. Now Pertzer. Oh, that was for a par, so it's another bogey for Tom Pertzer. After a tremendous start, he's sliding back definitely now, going to one over par. That puts him four shots behind Irwin in a tie with Jerry Pate. This shows you the value of hitting the greens. He's missed three straight greens, and you've gotten three straight bogeys after that wonderful start where he hit, played very well. There's some other players who have concluded their final rounds. Lee Trevino and former champion Hubert Green. John Mahaffey, our current American PGA champion. Dave Stockton, who won the PGA twice. Bruce Litsky, fine young player. Lon Hinkle, who inspired a new tree on the golf course here. And Arnold Palmer. Well, the bogey is now official in that hole. And Percher will move on and try to forget it. Well, he's got to think positively. You've got a par five uh, in front of you, a hole that, that you hope or your best chance to make a birdie on. Gary Player. Putting for a birdie two here, Jim. Yep, on the short 12th hole. Only par three on the back nine. No. Nope. Mm. Oh, that, that was could have been a big one for him. Gary at four over par. If he had gotten a three over, he would have been very much... Well, with each hole that you don't birdie, you're just, uh, you know, getting yourself backed into a corner as we watch uh, the man at the 18 t The deep concentration of Nicholas. He's out of contention, but he's still three under for the day, and he always gives his best effort. Whether he's shooting 68 or 88, he is trying each and every time he hits the ball. This is a short par four, 354 yards. That's all unusual in the U.S. Open Championship for a finishing hole. Going, starting out to the right. Turned out perfect. Yep, yep. Just coming down onto the fairway. He'll have a good shot into the 18th green. At age 39, Nicholas continues to walk on. And he'll be coming back to Britain very shortly to defend his British Open Championship. There's the way they stand. Hale Irwin by four now over Pertzer and Pate, remember. By five over Weisskopf. By seven over Player, Elder, and Nelson. Jack Nicholas now at seven. So he trails, actually, Bill Rogers and David Graham there. Ben Crenshaw, Lanny Watkins, and Fred Couples again was low amateur. A wide look from our crane camera at the gallery gathering around the 18th. That's the clubhouse. They burned down two clubhouses in the early days here, but this one's been here ever since the first U.S. Open that came here. That was in 1920. Jerry Pate on the eighth tee. Now this, we are, we are told that it looks like he's going to line up to go to the 17th fairway. This is a controversy that's been going on here ever since the first day when Lon Hinkle and several other players decided instead of playing this long dogleg left par five the right way or the normal way, they would play through an opening in the trees to the 17th fairway, then up and over some other trees and try to get home in two. The USGA planted a new tree that was supposed to frustrate them, but Hinkle and a few others, uh, uh, principally Chicho Rodriguez, have continued to do it. And that looks like Jerry Pate is going to dare it when he's in contention for the championship. <laughs> Well, I just don't know whether I agree with this or not. I haven't played the new hole, and you may wonder why he had his driver on the ground there, Jim. When you tee up, you must stay within two club lengths of the tee markers, and you see the graphic of the eighth hole there. Oh, now, now, here's the way you're supposed to play it normally. Naturally, you hit it down that green fairway. That That is the eighth hole itself. And then you might try to get home, but it's probably too long for you. Probably come up to about here with two good shots, and then you flip on in three trying to make a birdie putt. However, here is the way Hinkle's invention says to come over here through that little tiny hole in the trees to the 17th fairway, then a blind shot over some high trees and try to hit the green in two. The odds against it, but Pate must figure four shots out of the lead that he needs it. And yet, there's such a long way to go. There is the new tree that was put in. And there he goes. What is it, Hollis? Can you see I'm it? I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> You're on the normal fairway, probably. <laughs> I'm with Susie, and she's shaking her head right now. 
All right. He's talk, she was talking about Susie, Jerry Pate's wife, who shook her head. Apparently, she didn't agree with the judgment. As you see, he's in the rough <laughs> on the 17th fairway, playing the eighth hole. That's what happened to Hinkle when we saw him do it yesterday. And there's what he faces on the next shot. Well, what you've got to hope for is a good line at rough. Uh, it's really... Uh, do you want to take a chance and try to shorten it up? But you're, you're, as you pointed out, your second shot, blind, rough. Now, Pertzer, again, you heard Dave Marr say that, you know, you can't go as far back as you want. Some people think that when you're teeing up a ball. You may go no more than two club lengths behind the tee markers. That's why they put them there, to make you tee off in that general area of the teeing ground. Hollis, has the wind changed out there? Why would they be doing this? This was when they put the tree in at dawn on Friday morning, <laughs> Hinkle Spruce. <laughs> the wind is out of the west right now. Well, does that mean it's against or with? It's or? more It's more in their face right now. I guess it would be the best way to go. They couldn't get there the regular way. Okay, Perch is going to try it, hitting for the 17th fairway. Very, very seldom you'd see this in a major championship. But they're entitled to do it. Uh, any word on that shot, Hollis? Oh, he looks like he's hit a bad shot. Also in the right rough of 17, from the way the crowd was scurrying, it looked like he might have more of a problem than Jerry Pate. Perter and Pate, two young men, both doing what young men often do, daring. <laughs> well, we'll see here. Tom Weisskopf now, one hole back on the seventh fairway of the 452-yard most difficult hole in the course, most people think. Got it way long to the right. But he's on the, on the putting surface, on the green. Long way from the hole. As Bob Rosberg pointed out from the fairway. Now Hale Irwin. With his second shot on the seventh. Taking a wood out of that tall pair. Okay, let's see what happens to that one. All right, you see it on the putting surface. Will it stay there? Yes. But again, he is even further. And now to the 18th where Jack Nicholas gets his reception. A standing ovation, Jim. Look at these people up. Like Tom Weisskopf, he's playing in his home state of Ohio. A Columbus man is Jack Nicholas. That's just marvelous. There is Jack, three under on today's round. If he makes a par here, he'll have a round of 68, only one shot off the best round in the tournament. Nowhere near the U.S. Open record. That was a 63 by Johnny Miller at the most difficult Oakmont course outside Pittsburgh. If he makes a par here, he's going to be a little hot because he knocked it stiff. You can see he's looking where his ball mark was, and he spun the ball back, Jim, about 20 feet down that slick hill. It only has about a four-footer for a three here. Yeah. Yeah, he brought a, brought a great yell from the crowd even before he walked up with the shot itself. Jack Nicholas playing with young Bill Kratzer. Kratzer started today 10 overs, now 15 over, but he is a good young player in one year. You must believe we're going to see Kratzer very much in contention for the U.S. Open. There's the way they stand, the leaders. Speaking of Kratzer, uh, as a lot of the players are out here, are a pretty good number. Uh, the son of a golf professional. That's right, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's not too far from home. Where the Mad Anthonys live. That's right. Now you're really confusing our friends across the sea. Fort Wayne was named after an American hero named Mad Anthony Wayne. Now here comes Mr. Cratchit from Fort Wayne. Watch that pickup speed now. Mm. Tough. <laughs> Well, what is there to do but smile at well, this point? You have to see a little humor in it because it's, no one has made a putt from above that hole today. It's just so fast. That's Jack indicating there. No well, way. he's looking up to take a line. He's going to move his coin mm -hmm. uh, toward the left or right, whichever way it goes. And you line it up on something, whether you line it up on a tree or a stake or something. So. When you put it back down, you try to get it in exactly the same place as it was before. I think the average golfer just learned something else. Well, don't be too casual with that. Now back to Hale Irwin with a long, long putt for a birdie on seven. 
Anyone, though, will be happy with a par on this hole. Just uh, two putt. And that is plenty of work to do anyhow, from where he is. Led by three when the day began, now leads by four. That's a good putt. Great putt. That's uh, one of the few holes on this course, Jim, where you might have a long putt. These uh, greens are so small, as uh, Peter Alice said earlier, if you just put it in the center of the greens, uh, on about 16 of them, you have makeable putts. Well, let's see if Jack Nicholas can end up with a birdie before the crowd in his home state here. It would give him a round of 67 for today if he can make this. Well, he's right on the same line as Cratchit, where he moved his ball and he's uh, moved it back. So, he, and Bill made his first par, so. Jack knows the exact line and should know the speed from that. Nope. Oh, too bad. So it'll be a 68 for Jack Nicholas. Still a fine round, finishing up at seven over par for this year's U.S. Open. But yes, Virginia, there is a Jack Nicholas, and he'll be around, I think, for a while longer. The current British Open champion. And they're applauding him all the way to the scorer's tent, as you can see, where he'll as carefully as ever check over his score because, of course, he's responsible for the accuracy of that. Th threw an extra golf ball away then. He had a glove. He's <laughs> Maybe this is it. <laughs> His clubs next. There's the clubhouse at Inverness and the terrace where people are gathered. First day or so, there were people back there on the terrace who couldn't see the play and they were kind of noisy, but they've quieted down and become very respectful. I started to say earlier, two clubhouses burned down here in the early years of the club, but this one has been here just since the U.S. Open first came here in 1920. Pertzer's shortcut working out into a Dilemma. Hollis, what uh, doesn't look like he has any swing at all. Tom's got no swing. He's in jail right now. He's hoping just to advance it. He's got no backswing, and it's he's picking the club up and just chopping the ball out. He's going to be lucky. Now you he see just hit it 20, yeah. 30 feet. Just rolled it along the ground. That's all he could do. So maybe that is the law, David, that only unto Hinkle shall the spruce tree be kind or something. Well, I hate it hasn't worked out really for anybody else. I hate to see him take the chance to go by there and then get by there. And then, as Hollis said, you're in jail when you can go the conventional way and still have a wedge to the green. Hale Irwin now for a par after a lovely approach putt on the seventh hole. He's in, and the lead remains at four. Hale Irwin moving strongly along the fairways of Inverness as we come to you live from the U.S. Open. And that's how they stand in the Open Championship of 1979. Inverness Club, Irwin ahead by four. He's playing with Tom Weisskopf, crowd gathering around the 18th green. There's Tom Pertzer, who tried to take the shortcut down the 17th from the 8th tee, drove it into an impenetrable rough, just got it out about 20 yards or so. That's his third shot, blind, you can see, over the trees, trying to get it on the green, clatters down there and maybe in the sand under the tree, and I think uh, a rather costly mistake. You can see the great bunkers around this 8th green, 528 yards, and there's one of the great men of golf, Gary Player, on the 14th, one of the most difficult holes on the course, 448 yards, a par four. Player uh, in tremendous form today. He started at five over, he's now uh, three over, that's two under for today. Fine drive, they cry. He just got a birdie four at the long 13th, and he's safely down the 14th which uh, is almost the most difficult hole on the course, playing-wise, that is. 
heavy day, very muggy and hot, stiff wind. Uh, Pertz is underneath there. That's uh, his fourth from the sandy edge of the bunker and into more trouble. And really the, uh, the story that uh, Jim McKay told you about the eighth tee and the USGA planting the tree to stop the shortcut down the fairway, a few of them have tried to go the short way and really it hasn't paid off. The man who started it all, Lon Hinkle, very fine hitter of the ball. He had a go at it today, but he dropped a stroke and took six. We've seen a few eagles down the right way and a lot of birdies. And really this young man who was really, with the tremendous start that he had today with four threes, was really chasing Irwin, the leader. And it's all drifting away from him here. This is fifth shot. Now, uh, we'll go to the 18th green now. Another one of our colleagues, Bill Fleming, who's with the mighty man himself, Jack Nicholas. Thank you, Peter. You know, uh, this would be a time when Jack would like to be interviewed as the winner of the 79th U.S. Open. It's not going to be that way, but Jack, you had a marvelous round today. Well, thank you, Bill. I did play well, finally. And uh, uh, actually, I played well for three of the rounds of the tournament. And uh, I just played one bad round that starting out. Right? I was six over the first seven holes on... Friday, uh, only missing one green, three putting five times, and that just sort of uh, put me in such an awkward position that I just couldn't come back. And uh, at least, at least played one good round today. And of course, <laughs> the last two holes, finishing bogey and missing my short putt for par, may have cost me finishing. I could finish as high as you know fifth, sixth, seventh, somewhere in that in the tournament. But now I won't. Was the old lady as tough as you thought she was going to be? Well. You know, Inverness is a great golf course, Bill. It's uh, I played my first Open at Inverness. Uh, uh, I've loved this golf course for a long time, and uh, I've, ever since I played here when I was 17, I've wanted to get back to play an Open, and uh, to uh, not get off to a good start and not play well was very disappointing for me, but uh, uh, to at least get one good round in was nice. There was nothing ominous, was there, in throwing the ball and your golf club <laughs> at the end of 72 holes? <laughs> well, I had to get rid of both of them, Bill. I didn't want them anymore. <laughs> okay, Jack. There's always Baldus roll, and you won there uh, the last time in 67, so we'll see you in 80. Okay, Bill, thanks. Now let's go back to Peter. Thank you, Bill. And Hale Irwin, second shot at the eighth hole, the leader by four strokes. Uh, ahead, Pertz's problems up on the green. This is sixth shot. And everything now a bit tentative in that seven, so that's two strokes dropped to par. Trying to be smart, trying to cut off the line, and quickly to Irwin's second shot. Looking a little anxious. You can see the narrowness of the fairway, and just off the fairway into the rough, a little bit short of the green. But this is a par five. Irwin is four strokes ahead. There's the, the marker. There the flag, and Irwin's ball you can see sitting up very prettily. Very exciting situation, although Irwin is four shots ahead. Uh, one senses that disaster's lurking everywhere. Here's the man, Gary Player, who has never been known to give up on any cause. He's had a hole in one this week. He's hold putts, he's missed putts, and here he is battling away just three over par, two under for today. Second shot at this very difficult 14th hole, long iron. I think he might like that one. Oh, strong. Oh, strong, strong, strong. Took a hard bounce and shot on him, and he, he probably doesn't realize that that's gone. It was dead on the flag. He indicates that he thought that one was going to pitch and stop by the flag now he really is going to have to battle to keep uh, his par Tom Weisskopf at the eighth two over par Weisskopf who dropped strokes on the first two holes and the sixth started at one under now two over Peter Tom's hit a tremendous drive here He's going at the green with an iron, and uh, at the time he drove, actually the wind was in his face. He really hit a big one. In fact, Hale Irwin got the break of the tournament. He hit a ball that was going right out of bounds to the right, hit a tree, and came back into the middle of the fairway. 
Well, that's the luck of the draw. How's that? That looks a ripper. That's to the right. Get the right hand bunker. Just expected to get a little bit of draw from the slope on the fairway, and there he is in the sand. <laughs> but that's mighty hitting, Bob, to uh, attempt to reach this green. Well, obviously, he would have been pitching it on the green with an iron. That's a long way, this whole 528 yards. Look where that flag is. <laughs> the ninth tee and Tom Pertzer. Hollis Stacy, the United States uh, ladies champions following this match, and that looks a good one, Hollis. Tom is really nice. Jerry Pate is dead. And he that's how they the stand, and we'll be back at Inverness after these commercial notes. We have returned to the Inverness Club in Toledo, Ohio. Gary Player with his third shot on the 14th hole. He's two under par for the day, three over for the championship, but that will not help his cause. Clear across the green onto the other side of the fringe, and he'll need that long shot for a possible par here. So Hale Irwin retains his four-shot lead. Of the leaders, only Jerry Pate has managed even par so far today. Even uh, Irwin is one over. Now, this was just uh, 30 seconds ago while we were away. Hale Irwin's third shot on the par five eighth hole. Again, he almost went out of bounds on this hole, but hit a tree and came back in the fairway. And this third shot just gets him right back into the game. Actually touched the flag stick on the way past. Big break there, and you just look at him. He knows it. Because that was gone, and if he goes over the green, that's a quick six at uh, best. Meanwhile, Tom Weisskopf, put his second in the sand. He was trying to go for the green in two on the par five hole. So this is his third shot. Good shot. That's a good one. Not bad at all. Both then will be putting for birdies on this par five. Weisskopf at the moment, five shots out of the lead in third place. That's what you hate to do, Jim, is play a sand shot when it, uh, <laughs> the wind is blowing directly towards you and you're a little perspiration on you. You just yeah. get covered with sand. Yeah. Well familiar with the game and with this man, Gary Player. His fourth shot, needing this for a par. Trying for quite a few years now to complete the double grand slam. He'll need that for a bogey five. Only Jack Nicholas has won the four major championships twice. Only four men have won all four of them once. Gary Player, Jack Nicholas, Ben Hogan, and Gene Sarazen. So he would like to join Jack as the only two times around winner of the Grand Slam tournaments. What a real distinction would be. But this has been a tough one to get number two up. Getting harder as you go along. Now, for a bogey five. That would drop him to four over, seven shots out of the lead. So he certainly can't afford to miss this. And he doesn't. The determined figure of Gary Player striding from yet another green. Weisskopf now for the possible birdie on the par five eighth hole. Big putt to make for him, Jim. You got to, Somebody has to start putting a little pressure on Hale if they're going to make this any sort of a close race. So in a way, it's the advantage to be out just a little bit. But Hale, know there's still some golf to be played. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He made it. I <laughs> thought he had let it go to the left. Looked like it, but just caught the corner. Now Tom Kurtzer on the ninth fairway, a discouraged young man inside. He has to be, after making the wrong decision, really. I mean, it's easy to say that with hindsight, but so it turned out to be for him, trying to shortcut the eighth hole. Well, you, you saw how Weisskopf and Irwin played the hole, and uh, down the, the normal way, both of them putting for birdies. And Irwin about to make his attempt. Weisskopf, having made his, has gotten to one over par for the tournament. Tie with Jerry Pate for second place behind Irwin here. Four shots out of the lead. That's pending this putt. 
Pete at the moment, though, in trouble up on nine. Unshakable Mr. Irwin. He turned a seven into a four. He's now back to even par for the day, four under for the tournament, and has a five-stroke lead over Jerry Pate and Tom Weisskopf. We're going to take a break here as you see how they stand at Inverness in the U.S. Open of 79. Well, we're back at the Open Championship at Inverness. That's how they stand, Hale Irwin and Weisskopf both getting their birdie fours at the eighth, playing it the conventional way. But Irwin five strokes ahead, he and Jerry Pate. This is Pate walking back, looking over his putt on the ninth green. Now he's had four strokes already here at the ninth. He's had uh, many problems, this hole 420 yards a lot of the flags today tucked away in the corners of the greens. The course in beautiful condition. Pate hit a wild tee shot left under the trees, couldn't really get any shot at it. This for a five. Look at the swing, look how wide that is. And he was a little, little scared, a little tentative, and why not? They really are lightning fast. So, Pate looks as if two shots certainly are going to be dropped here at the par four ninth hole. Pate, who was level par, par here at Inverness is 71, 35, 36. The course close on 7,000 yards in length. Greens lightning fast and very small. And here's young Tom Pertzer, as you see there, three over par. He started with four threes, three birdies and a par, three at the short hole, and then he's dropped strokes at, uh, well, he had bogey, 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 and then a double bogey, so five shots in the last four holes have been blown away. But this is for a three at the ninth. And turn, turn, turn. So at last, Tom Pertzer can uh, have a little breath. That's the ninth tee, Irwin coming up behind. And watching a little bit left, is it? Yes, just catches the rough, but sitting up. Huge gallery following this match. And now, Weisskopf. familiar upright style gives himself room to swing Ooh, he's hooked it. pulled it pulled it and yes there it goes into the rough settles behind the trees now back to Jerry Pate for a six two over par six which he gets, but that, at the end of the day, is, I'm sure, will be very costly. You know, Pertzer, Tom Pertzer, just a little small one for his par four. And Pertzer gets a four. And, uh, well, after that marvellous start, all dissipated, uh, nine holes to play. That's the ninth, our model of the ninth hole, Weisskopf and Irwin both left from the tee. Bob Rosberg, uh, our colleague there, is out on the fairway and by this time I'm sure can tell us how they lie. Hale has a lie in the short rough, which is not too bad, uh, Peter, but with the flag where it is so short on the green, it's almost impossible to get the ball close. Tom is going to have a shot. If he keeps it on the green, it's going to be a miracle. Uh, I would think that he would be satisfied to put the ball in the front bunker right now because he'd really have a pretty easy shot from there. Uh, once again, the uh, 
the narrowness of the fairways. The rough here is not as punishing as I've seen on many other open championship courses here in the United States, but the wind is blowing, and I would like some of our pundits at home there who think the big ball is the answer to everything to have been here this week watching some of these great stars try and handle a ball of uh, American size, 1.68, round this course with a stiff wind blowing. And, oh, well, just pitched alongside the bunker and skipped onto the green. It goes to the back and just off. And that really was as good as could be done from that position. Now, Irwin. Five ahead. This course, we've said it many times, it's, it's essential to hit straight from the tee and then just try and put the ball in the middle of the greens. It's a change of plan, really, for so many of these players, particularly the younger ones who are so used to playing golf-like darts, firing everything at the flag. But not here, although the greens have been holding very well and the course in beautiful condition. Carried it on and just off the back. <laughs> a pat on the old ticker to see if it's still going. And Irwin now on his way up to the ninth green with a five-stroke lead. Now we'll just go ahead to the 11th. Jerry Pate. Pertz has already driven and is uh, down the fairway. This 10th hole, just 363 yards. And what problems we've seen here this week. Same as yesterday. And that's too far. Gone over the hill, I think. Hollis Stacey's there. Do you see that one, Hollis? Jerry's just hit it too far. He's on, he's through the fairway and on the downslope. So he's going to have a pretty tough shot in there with the pin tucked closely to the right hand side of the green. One of the great features here on this course is the, uh, is the ridge, the bank, the swale, call it whatever you will, that runs through the green. Let's have a word now from Jim McKay, who's behind the 18th green here at Inverness. All right, once again, we'd just like to update things for those of you who may j just have joined us. It's a long afternoon, remember? Four hours of coverage or till conclusion. We've been covering all 18 holes of the leaders in this final round of the United States Open Golf Championship of 1979. Well, the big story of the day is that Hale Irwin has held fast. He started the day four under par. He is still four under par. He's had his Slight ups and downs, but generally speaking, the net result ha has been all that's been important. Tom Weisskopf uh, started the day at one under. He's had a lot of trouble in the early going. He's now one over or five shots off the lead. Jerry Pate has played well until that uh, ninth hole there when it caught up with him with a double bogey six. He's going to three over. Tom Pertzer started out with four threes, with three birdies and a par on the par three hole, but uh, then took several bogeys in a row, and particularly in the eighth hole, he tried to take the famous shortcut to the 17th fairway it resulted in disaster for him. He took a double, double bogey seven, and he is playing himself out of it. It appears now, although the, remember there are nine holes still to go. Gary Player is the only one of the people on the top part of the leaderboard who's under par. He's one under par for the day and four over. Here is Gary Player on the 15th green. This is his third shot. As you can see, the wind is up again today at Inverness. Some holes it's across, some holes it's against, some holes you're downwind, but it's always a factor. Final round being played on Father's Day here in the United States as we are also joined by a live audience in the United Kingdom. I'd like to ask you, uh, Peter Ellis, do you celebrate Father's Day in the United Kingdom or is that just one of ours? Uh, no, it's become very popular now. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, there are a few dads over there as well, you know. Okay, well, we'll wish them all well on both sides of the Atlantic and back over to you. Thank you, Jim. I'm sure they'll be, well, we're keeping a few of them up late tonight. I hope they're enjoying the golf. This is Weisskopf from the back of the ninth. And that's his third and good effort. Tenth fairway, Tom Pertz's second shot. This hole, only, only 363 yards. Tiny little green 
a good shot. You saw there how receptive these greens are. They're lightning fast, but they seem to be firm. Now here from the back of the ninth, we're back with the leader, Hale Irwin, stalking round behind his ball, just feeling out, looking at the contour of this green. He's off the actual putting surface. It looks as if he's going to leave the flag in the hole. A very experienced player and one of my favourite players. I, I, I must confess to uh, like watching this man hit the ball. It, it's so simple and elegant. He's five ahead and he's got an, an old head on his shoulders and I'm sure he won't be trying to do anything silly. Just get down in two if you possibly can. He's had his good breaks today, had a, a couple on the previous hole, the eighth. He was going out of bounds with his second, clattered into a tree, and then he was going over the green, hit the flag, and ended up with a, with a birdie fall. Hardly touched that, way to the left. Now, has he given it enough? Has he, look at it turn, look at it go. Gary Player up ahead got his par four at the 15th so he remains at four over as both Weisskopf and Irwin mark their ball or rather Weisskopf replaces and both have little testing putts for their par fours I'm with Frank Hannigan who's the assistant director of the United States Golf Association and Frank uh, you really have got the flags in some difficult places today and the greens are fast and it's very hard to hold a lead. It is indeed. Irwin, uh, Irwin's job is formidable. Peter, uh, there have been 75 opens played at 72 holes and the, the fellow who's led after the third round has won only 33 of them, less than half the time. Well, that just shows you the enormous pressures particularly now in modern times of course it's a, such a marvelous championship but the, dare we say it the commercial rewards too are so great oh that's the first poor putt Tom's hit for a couple of days that was a bit weak and dribbled out to the right and the shoulders just slump a little bit as Weisskopf goes to the edge of the green having dropped another stroke and goes two over Irwin ever meticulous this for his par four ninth hole Boomed it straight in the slow backswing and a nice follow through. Now, Gary Player, 16th hole, 405 yards. There's our model on the left. You can see all the trouble facing Player. Through the trees, the drive must go. And the familiar walk after it usually means he's in good form and swinging well. And there it goes straight down the middle of the fairway for Gary Player, who's been uh, going along very nicely. Uh, we re recorded this on the 10th hole a few moments ago. This is Jerry Pate. That's his third shot. And hello. <laughs> well, would you believe it? A drive too long that stopped on the bank. A marvellous second to get it there. And then a casual chip in for a three. Easy game. Now, uh, Pertzer, who played everything correctly, has this for a three. such the vagaries of the game he plays it properly takes four eight has a few dramas and gets a birdie three well that eases the pain a little bit of the uh, slightly disastrous ninth hole for pate as Pertzer goes in for his par four remains three over Well, Peter uh, Hale has got a six-stroke lead with nine holes to play. Arnold Palmer once had a seven-stroke lead with nine holes to play and did not win. I remember that very well because I've had many a great battle with an old chum of mine, Billy Casper, who, in fact, uh, won that championship. And they, they
they tied, of course, and then Arnold, I think, once again had a big lead, which slipped away. So anything can happen. There's a view from our high camera. That's the 18th screen, the clubhouse. We just swing round left to the 10th tee, which is really is a magnificent tee. It would uh, grace any uh, or most courses as a green. Uh, 363 yards. There's a dip down. You saw Jerry Pate earlier drive too far and finish in the heavy grass down the bank the holes 363 yards hot and windy very small green which is considerably below the level of where the drive should finish there's a little stream winds in front of the green bunkers all around there's all the bunkers down the right hand side that's the first fairway on the right we're just going over the top of. There's the small green at the end, bunkers left, and the big hill behind with all the spectators waiting for this final group to come down the tenth. Halo, it looks as if he's got a three wood. It's going way right land in the bunker yes just pitches short and drops in the sand Bob it's not too bad a lie Peter he's back far enough that he can really play any kind of shot he wants to without worrying about the lip but it's the only thing about this hole if you happen to hit it a little heavy you can put it in that creek down there in front of the green and that's six and Weisskopf you see with a one iron Hit a little left. It's going to be all right, though. Yes, that's fine. We're going to Gary play now at the 16th. Bill Fleming, our colleagues there, and has been following Gary's fortunes. What news, William? Well, he's hit a perfect tee shot. He's got about 160 yards into the green, and as you know, Peter, that flag is tucked just behind that hillock on the left front. Challenging approach shot. This hole, 405 yards. And he set it off to the right, hoping, I think, to have the wind blow in a little bit to the hole, and it does. No, that was a great shot by player. Just skips past the hole. Fine shot. We're going to leave you for a couple of minutes, but we will return to the open. We return to live coverage of the U.S. Open. It's the final round, and here is the leader, Hale Irwin, in a bunker, a fairway bunker, on the 10th hole. This hole, a par four. 363 yards long. Can he get there, do you think, Dave? Oh, yeah. This is a trap I believe he was in yesterday. He had a marvelous mm -hmm. shot and almost made a birdie. But as Rosberg said earlier, uh, don't hit it fat here simply because there's a little creek down at the bottom of the hill. Well, half his game is behind him, but half lies ahead. It's as simple as that. Looks, looks pretty doggone good. Look at that. Yeah. Great shot. Hale Irwin with a six-shot lead at the moment over Tom Weisskopf and Jerry Pate. And that's Jerry Pate right there up on the 11th hole. And uh, that doesn't look too good. Dove down in there a bit on the 11th, which is a 378-yard par four. Now Tom Weisskopf, the former British Open champion who has never won his own United States Open. With his second shot, he's playing with Irwin if you've just joined us. 63 players played the front nine today, and only three of them played it under par. Jim Simons went it up with 68. Jack Nichols who did the same and Gary Player who's still out there. Now that's on the back of the green. His club selection Jim all day has just been uh, a little shaky. Just hasn't seemed to have had the right club in his hand at any time. Here's scores of some other players you would be interested in. Former champions like Lee Trevino and Hubert Green. PGA champion John Mahaffey. Dave Stockton won the PGA twice. Young Bill Kratzer. Litsky. Hinkle, he of the tree, and Palmer. These are all people who have concluded their rounds, as you can see, what they are over par and their actual total, final total of strokes. Gary Player now putting for a birdie. Gary on the 16th hole is four over par for the tournament, one under for today. One under in this golf course is an achievement. And he's left himself a little one for the par four that he should be able to make. 
to remain four over at the end of 16. Gary beginning to run out of holes. Soon he will have nothing to count on except others making mistakes behind him. David, it looks to me that at least at the moment like the wind is going down a bit. I don't know whether it's true in the golf course. We'll check with our reporters when we come back to some of those groups. Well, it is here at 18, Jim, and uh, I just hope it's not switching around to bring us that rain they were talking about. Now, Jerry Pate has a shot here that he would be very fortunate to make a par four here. He's got to carry it far enough to get over the deep rough, and yet there's not much oh, green between the end hole. Right yeah. oh, marvelous shot. Marvelous just, shot. Just as well as, just as good as you could play that. Still a pretty difficult putt for the par four, and he's tied for second right now, remember. The three leaders represent two former United States Open champions, Hale Irwin and Jerry Pate, and one former British Open champion, Tom Weisskopf. In other words, three of the finest golfers in the world battling it out for the American title. Now Tom Pritzer playing with Pate. Three over par. He'd like to go back and play that eighth hole over again, I'm Ooh. sure, where he made double bogey seven. Very well played. Oh. Well played. And 11 is not that hard a hole uh, to look at. 378, uh, you just want to hit it down the fairway, and you have just eight or nine air into the green, and if you don't drive it into fairway here, then your problems start. When you mentioned about the wind turning around and the possibility of rain, at the moment, there's no real threat of rain. In fact, there's a lot of blue sky, but uh, there's a, a lot of bad weather in the Midwest here, so we're keeping our eye open. Look at the crowd gathered just on this one hole. They've been sitting there all day watching a lot of people play the 11. On the 10th now with Weisskopf. Very fast down this hill, Jim. Very fast. All right. Good putt. We get word that Gary Player made his par on 16, so he re remains four over for the tournament. In a tie for fifth place with Larry Nelson and Bill Rogers. Lee Elder has dropped back. He had a double bogey. He's gone to seven over. Bill Rogers is, as I said, at four over. He's gotten back into it a bit. Now Hale Irwin, the leader, by six. And this for another possible birdie. Well, it would be getting pretty close to a ceremonial march down the back nine if he would make this. But let's take a look at Jerry Pate first for the par. Up on 11. All right. It's a fighting four there. Left rough, right rough, pitch on, right. good shot. Now Irwin back on 10 for the birdie that could give him a seven shot lead and could put him one under par for the day. Oh, he knew it immediately walking after it. Of course, yesterday he walked after one and went in. Yes, <laughs> at the eighth hole. <laughs> All right, par four, however, for Hale Irwin after being bunkered on his tee shot on this hole. Remains the leader by six over Weisskopf and Pate. Now Weisskopf must essay this small putt for a par four to maintain his place on the leaderboard. A man who was born not far from here in Massillon, Ohio. Has extra motivation. Now Tom Pritzer for the par on 11, and he's got it. Remaining at three over for the tournament in fourth place. Now the 17th tee with Gary Player. This is the 431-yard par four where you drive kind of straight ahead. Then you have a shot down to the green. Amazing the distance and accuracy this man gets out of a golf ball. Not a tall man, but uh, a very strong one. Well, that's a tribute to how much hard work he's put into this game of golf for 25 years, Jim. There's no one that works harder or tries to get his body in better physical shape than Gary Player. Well, Dave, you're also what one might call a man of average height. Is there any secret to it for those guys? Well, I just think you have to watch what you eat. And, of course, in Gary's, uh, and this man here, you, you do watch your diet. You try to eat a balanced diet. And, 
get enough rest and just take care of yourself. The leader, Tall Hale Irwin. Looks like a tree wood there, Jim. On the 11th. He's Adam. got this one way to the right. Oh, my goodness. Well, can you give us any more detail on that, Bob? Well, it's so far to the right, it's over in the rough by the second hole, and it's right behind a tree. He's going to have a very, very difficult shot to play. I don't think he can even shoot it at the green. All right, mother, put the dinner on the back burner. It's not over <laughs> yet, and it's Father's Day. Let him stay here. Well, both times are three wood there, Bob. He's hit it to the right. Well, he's hit a lot of them to the right today, Dave. That shot he hit at, uh, at eight, you just couldn't believe how far to the right it went. And, and that was the break that probably won in the golf tournament if he does uh, go ahead and win it. Now, can Weisskopf take advantage of this? He also has a fairway wood, which I believe is a three. Bob? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Put it up there. Right, right there in the middle of the fairway. Perfect. Okay. But in order to take advantage, they're going to have to make some birdies. You just can't uh, wait for Hale to make six bogeys or something like that. He's just too fine a player to do that. Now on the 12th tee with Tom Pritzer. Tom Pritzer on the 167-yard hole. Jerry Pate has already hit and is on the green. We talked about that invisible force that seems to control the open sometimes. No sooner did we say the wind was down than now it's up again. It's time to test them once more. Well, this is the shortest par three on the course, but nevertheless a very good one. The only par three on the back nine. Check out that shot, then take a break. There he is, safely on the green. We're at the open and we're live. That's the 11th, and Halo are in trouble, and let's hear from Bob Rosberg. Peter, I'd be very surprised if Hale's going to take a shot at the green. He's going to have to play a big fade. The wind's coming right out of the right, and he's going to have to play a miracle shot to get it on. Six-shot lead, I would think that, uh, well, he just played it out into the fairway, but now he hit it too far. It flew on him. It's in the left-hand gallery, but he still is in the correct position, though he has the opening that he can run it up to the flag. Well, he's over there, having played conservatively from the tee with a three wood, but pushing it down the right. And now Erwin will need to just collect his thoughts a bit, because he is six strokes ahead. But uh, as Frank Hannigan told you, Arnold Palmer in his heyday was once seven ahead and uh, lost to Billy Casper in this championship. Uh, Weisskopf's second shot. No, hit so. Well, cries of no, but again, on the green, in the middle. Well, Weisskopf looking for birdies now, which, which are pretty hard to come by with the pins positioned where they are today. And of course, Frank, uh, whilst all the, the, the play is going on at the top of the league, there they stand, of course, there, there are almost two other little competitions going on within this championship. For what reasons? Uh, very much so, and very intensely, Peter. The those who finish in the low 15 are exempt from all qualifying for the U.S. Open next year, and the low 16 traditionally are invited to play at the Masters Tournament. Ah, so a lot to play for. Now here's Gary Player. Second shot, 17th hole. And look at the intensity. Oh, he's looking at it. Look at that. He really is a marvellous man at this game of golf and playing all in white today. Now Pertzer for a birdie. Twelfth hole. That's for two. Turning, turning, turning. Good speed. Save three. Pertzer. Three over. Back to Halo in at the 11th. Third shot, and look, you can see the flag on the front of the green. Not much room to land and stop.
third shot. Landing it short. Skips it on, watches it roll, but that's not too bad. Still moving. Irwin's a wily campaigner, though. He'll know that he must accept the fact that he may well lose a stroke or two here and there. The great thing is to not lose too many. Up ahead, Hertz and Pate both got their pars at the 12th, so they hold their position, two and three over par. Weisskopf, two over par with a reasonable chance. This is the 18th and Ben Crenshaw from the most difficult size, chipping from a little gully and it's lightning fast. Third shot. Ben looking down the hill, Crenshaw eight over par. Started the day at five over. So he needs uh, four for 74. Uh, but back to Irwin at the 11th. Six ahead of Weisskopf and Tate. Gary Player though up ahead. It's four over. Pleasant indeed. Now, Irwin. Comfortable lead, of course, and uh, here again, all sorts of thoughts. Well, you wonder, everyone has their own thoughts, whether Irwin thinks he can hold this or whether he's just going to roll it up nice and tidy and accept a dropped stroke. That's tidy, but a stroke dropped, caused yet again by a missed fairway from the tee. Back to the 17th, Gary Player. After that uh, splendid second shot, this 17th hole, 431 yards, and a very hard par four. Well, the last hole is but a drive and a pitch, and if Player could, could finish 3-3, three, three, well, It'll stir him up a bit. Turning, turning, turning. There it is. Heavy putter out of his bag this week. He's got his centre shafted one. A little bit lighter. And what a man. All in white. Perhaps that's a new secret. He's discovered that over 40, he's gone from the black to the white, and that might give him enough charge to go on for another 25 years. Who knows? Back to the 18th, Crenshaw for a four. Weisskopf on the left, Crenshaw putting for a four, taking five. Weisskopf rolling it up two and a half feet away. Crenshaw finishes off, nine over par. For the four rounds. Not too pleased, par here, of course, 71, two, eight, four. So look, watch this putt of player again. You see he's got a closed stance. Look how much this ball turns and in she goes. A defending champion and in north. Irwin hold his little tiddler for his bogey back there on the 11th. Now north. Who had... Uh, Good round yesterday, 68. Three over for today, and finishes off with a hold putt. That's nine over for the championship. Two, nine, three. Weisskopf got his par as Crenshaw and North move up to the scoring tenth, just off the 18th green. Frank, very meticulous checking of cards now after a, we've had a couple of disasters, haven't we, with wrongly marked scorecards over the years in various tournaments and championships? 
Yeah, we certainly have, uh, Peter. The, the two classics were those of uh, Roberto Di Vicenzo in the 1968 Masters and Jackie Pung oh, in the 1950s uh, U.S. Women's Open. Very unfortunate, but good administration. Putting someone in the tent to protect the players, to administer the thing right is the way to do it. USJ has a young man in there who named Tom Meeks, and if a player is disqualified, well, he's in trouble. Player at the 18th. Lambs one away. He hit it way right, uh, Peter. Yes, he's up on the bank there, Bill, and um, by far from the ideal position. Oh, was he pumped up when he came up to that tee? He just put the ball on the ground and teed it off. That's what birdies will do, I guess. Indeed, there's player. Back to the 12th, though, this... A uh, short hole of 167 yards. Pin positioned near the front of the green today. There's Weisskopf. Bob Rosberg's there. How's this hole playing, Bob? Playing very difficult, uh, Peter. Very, very difficult because it's downwind and the pin is very short, almost on a downslope. It's going to take a miracle shot to get it close right now. Sort of an eight iron shot or, or what? I would think it's either a big eight or just a little seven. Uh, Tom's, it's, if it's up, it's a great shot. Oh, what a shot. He stopped the ball short of the flag. Just an amazing shot. Just landed in the in the rough, just short of the green. Touch unlucky. Or some might say lucky. He's out of the two inch long fringe grass, just off the putting surface. Now back to Hale Irwin who um, looked as if, um, well, he still might, of course, equal the record win in modern golf, who, incidentally, Frank, was our own Tony Jacklin a few years ago, won by, what was it? Oh, he won by seven shots in 1970, Peter. Those were the days. Whatever happened to Tony Jacklin? Oh, he's hale and hearty and uh, showing a bit of uh, welcome form, I'm glad to say. Nat Irwin, who really is on form, It's a beautiful shot here. Splendid. Irwin in this mood is, I think, uh, quite majestic because uh, although he's hit one or two wayward shots, the pressure is enormous, of course, but time and time again we've seen iron shots hit absolutely straight at the flag. And almost hold his tee shot. Uh, that's... Tom Pertzer at the 13th, peeping over the bank. There's the 13th hole, par five, which has been the uh, one of the easiest holes on the course to get a birdie at. But with the wind swinging around today, not quite as easy as it was. Down and up to a elevated green, small entrance. Bunkers all around. Hollis, where's that one? He's hit it in the left bunker, left of the green. He had a very good lie. And it looks like they're all, Jerry and Tom are pulling out all the stops right now. Well, Pertzer once more in trouble. He's had lots of trials and tribulations. We're going to leave you for a couple of minutes, but we'll follow their progress here. The wind is still up at Inverness. We're moving toward the finish of the 1979 United States Open Golf Championship. Hale Irwin leading by four over Tom Weisskopf by five over Jerry Pate by six over Tom Pertzer, Gary Player. Now, Gary Player is at the 18th green. Let's take a look at the 12th hole here. Just a matter of seconds ago, Tom Weisskopf putting for a birdie. If you wonder how he got to plus one and moved closer to the lead, that's how he did it just now. Now live for Hale Irwin for a birdie. The leader trying to match it. Yes, there is. 
Just lost a hole, uh, stroke the hole before, and could lose one there, and all of a sudden it's four, not six, and uh, the lead goes right back again to five as the leaders match birdies. This was Gary Flair's second shot of the 18th out of the rough on the right. He hit a marvelous shot. Look at that. This is the short par four. We'll be seeing a lot of it as we go along there. <laughs> a little gesture as he throws the club to his caddy. Gary Player, and now Tom Pertzer, quickly, but over to Jerry Pate. Jerry Pate on 13, now Gary Player again. About to putt. Let's stay with him for a minute here as he's trying for a birdie. He is three over for the tournament, two under on today's round. If he make a birdie, he'd have a round of 68, which would tie for low round of the day with Jack Nicholas and Jim Simons. Plus, he's going to finish about third or fourth if well, that happens. That's right, right and in. he's done it. Gary Player of South Africa. Three under par round of 68. Moves to two over par. It ties him with Gary Pate right now for third place. Well, he can do no more in his own behalf, but he sure did plenty today. There with his caddy, Rabbit Dyer, wearing a hat that he got when he caddied for Gary in South Africa, in Swaziland, actually. Rabbit sent me a Christmas card a couple years ago from the Royal Swazi Golf Club. <laughs> now Cal Pete. Here's a man who, when he first came out, Cal Pete conceivably could qualify for the Masters Tournament. And of course, uh, Lee Elder is the only black golfer who has played in that distinguished tournament in Georgia. Uh, this is not definite because, of course, we won't know who the top 16 are for quite a while when everybody gets in, but he could do it. I started to say when he first came out, he was known mostly as the man with the diamond embedded in one of his teeth, but he has made a place for himself on the tour and has played extremely well this week. He's four over today, it, still, over nine o still only nine over for the tournament. And when he makes that little tap in, he'll come in at nine over. As we said, that could make the top 16. That's his big aim here today. He's a, 75. He's a very fine player. We haven't seen much of him on television, but this man is a good golfer, this good straight driver. Look at him. There it is, Gary Player and Cal Pete walking off the last green at Inverness in Toledo, Ohio. The man from South Africa, the man from the American South. Cal used to travel with migrant workers. I believe he used to sell jewelry from the tailgate of his station wagon, didn't he? Sure did. It's been a tough road to get to the 72nd green at Inverness, I'll tell you that. Jerry Pate. This for a birdie. Four on the 13th hole. Pertzer made a birdie to go back to two over and to tie Pate and Gary Player for third place. All right. I'll tell you, nobody's giving up out there. Nobody. Suddenly a rash of birdies. Jerry Pate going to one over for the tournament, tying Tom Weisskopf now for second place. Five shots behind Hale Irwin. The key is whether Irwin is shakable. So far, it does not seem so. Why don't we have another look at uh, Gary Player with his birdie putt on the 18th hole. Gary birdieing 17 and 18. Just a great performance. <laughs> man can play the last round. He made a lot of friends here the other day. He heard that there was a man who was a big fan of his who was in the hospital and made a point of going over to see him and have quite a visit with him. All right, now let's look back down the 18th fairway towards the clubhouse at Inverness, the clubhouse toward which Ted Ray walked in 1920 to victory by a single shot over Harry Varden and four other men, including the uncle of Dave Marr, Jack Burke Sr. Now to the 14th tee with Jerry Pate, the 14th hole is 448 yards, a par four. Uh, what's the wind situation out there now, Bob? I think Hollis. Excuse me, Hollis, yeah. Are the, you there? Yeah, the wind is blowing out of, more out of the west. Uh, before it was the southwest. Jerry's been hitting it left all day. He's been having a big, a hard time with his driver, so he's taking extra time with his 
T-shirt right now. Right, but when you say west or southwest, what's it doing as far as the hole is concerned? Is it across, against what? It's cross. Right to left? Yeah, players right to left. Okay. Where's that? He's hit it left again. Mm -hmm. And it's left of the bunkers, maybe in the 15th fairway. Oh, dear. Jerry Pate, having just moved into a tie for second, now gets himself in trouble again. Next two holes are long par fours, Jim, and uh, of course you, you've got to try for a little length, and yet uh, you miss the fairway, you're going to make a very good chance to make a five. Well, let's have a look at Irwin now, the leader on the 13th hole, the par five. What's the situation? Well, here's a, a graphic look at the situation. First, Irwin on the left in the rough, Weisskopf on the right. What's the situation, Bob? Well, he's just playing a sand wedge or a pitching wedge just down in front of the creek. You know, I just looked, thought back, Hale Irwin has not hit a fairway since the fourth hole. Is that right? And it's just amazing. All he did hit the eighth fairway with the help from the tree, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's really been a tough go. He's hitting some great irons, but he's really having trouble hitting either the three wood or the driver. He hit three or four in a row to the right, and then he hit a real snap hook here. Weisskopf has hit a big drive and really didn't get the best of the, of the bounce. It bounced right and caught the edge of the rough, but he does have a good enough lie that he can get it to the green. Well, he'd certainly love another birdie here, and this is the par five hole. It's the place where you'd like to get them. That's where he made eagle yesterday, so. Yep. So Hale Irwin's been holding on with those iron shots of his, particularly the long irons, and he's always been very good at those. We remember the two iron, wasn't it? He hit to the 18th green at wing foot. Yes, after I said he couldn't get there. <laughs> <laughs> he rubs that in. But this, he's got an interest there, Bob. He can run it on even. Uh, he doesn't have to carry it all the way on the green. No, he has the opening. Uh, he's about 215 yards downwind. Wind actually coming out of the left, but helping. Well, an eagle here for him, assuming a par for Irwin, would make a two-stroke difference and bring him to within three, and it would then not be over at all. However, <laughs> a job to be done here. No, and it's no. going left. Ten. Probably in the Ten. bunker if it gets there. Double. Yep. Oh. I think it's the bunker. Is it? Can you see if it's the bunker or the long grass? I believe it's in the bunker. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, just as he did on the eighth hole going for it in two, he hit the bunker. It was the bunker on the right the last time, the bunker on the left this time. So that's where he is behind that, that hillock there. Bill Rogers has just been hanging in there all day. He's four over for the tournament, putting for a birdie on the 16th hole. Not quite, not quite. I could have moved him a stroke closer to the lead and out of a tie with Larry Nelson and David Graham for sixth place. He's a, he's a good little player, this guy. He just goes along and uh, shows a lot of heart, Jim. He's gotten off to a bad start on both Saturday and Sunday, but he's just fought his way back into really what looks like it's going to be a good finish. Well, for those of you watching by satellite in England today live, when you hear about the depth of the American tour, they're talking about young players like this. They do keep coming. A look at some of the gallery gathered around various greens here. A lot of grandstands this year, here provided by the USGA and the Inverness Club. Irwin by five over Weisskopf and Pate. Pate, just to keep you up to date if you're in and out of the house. It always pleases us that each year go, goes by, it seems that more of those young players we're talking about, they go to the British Open Golf Championship because it seems to me you can't be a world-class golfer until you prove you can play the seaside links of, of Britain as well as the more parkland courses of America. And if you're really going to have a career, you should go play in the Open when you have the chance and when you're playing well. And I think you have people like Nicholas and Trevino and others talking to the young players about that very thing. Get over there and learn how to play those great courses. Hale Irwin, third shot, par five hole. And the murmur of the crowd as it comes up. And he's right there. His trusty irons working like scalpels, although the driver has been a little errant. But you kind of wonder with such a big lead if, uh, you, you know, what do you do? I, I feel like that the putty hit at the tenth hole was all of a sudden he's five shots ahead and, and you've got to keep your mind on what you're doing. 
Tom Weisskopf's problem here is not to get discouraged because through his career, great golfer that he is, great swing that he has, he has had a tendency to get discouraged. Here's Tom Percher now with his second shot on the 14th, another of the difficult par fours on the back nine, 448 yards long. Percher at two over, tied for fourth place with Gary Player, who just had a beautiful round of 68. It's like a pretty good liar there. Now you heard him. All right, a little long. Good shot, just the wrong club. And the wind keeps going up and down. There are lots of problems up there. Yeah, now I tell him, right? <laughs> yeah, see, now the, the flag is still at the moment. And yet, another minute, it might gust to 10 or 15 miles an hour. They're just picking up as we watch. Jerry Pate lies two already on this par four hole. Remember, he hit his tee shot way left and was only able to advance it that far. Well, that's what got him at nine when he made a six was a duck hook to the left. Yeah. Jerry Pate oddly started at one over. He's still at one over, even far for the day, but he's had a lot of adventures doing it. Birdie two and three and bogey five and double bogey nine and things like that. Weisskopf third shot on the bar five hole. Well, if he has a good line, this shouldn't be too difficult to shot. It should break. If he gets on the green, quite a bit from left to right. Oh. We'll have a longish attempt at a birdie here. Not as good as he'd like. No. No. He had hoped for eagle here as he had yesterday, but not to be. Let's go back to Jerry Pate. About to hit his third shot on the par four, 14th hole from the left rough. When we say left or right, we're always speaking golfers left or right. Lots of jets flying in and out today. Now there you see it, over in three on the par four hole. Well, you look at the player's expression, Jim, and you know that they're guessing because of the wind. Uh, it's sort of a quizzical expression each time one of them look up, you know, be right, as Tom Purchase said, or Jerry just wondering if he had the right club in his hand. Still the leader, still by five, Hale Irwin. Some other players who have concluded their rounds today, there you see the talented Ben Crenshaw, the defending champion Andy North, Lee Trevino, twice former champion. Hubie Green, who won at Southern Hills. Mahaffey, the PGA champ. Lon Hinkle, Arnold Palmer there. Now, yeah, Weisskopf will really be watching Irwin's putt, Jim, because he's on almost the same line. Tom's just a couple of feet inside of him. Be more watching the speed, and then what does it do at the hole? How much break will take place there? Both men lying three. They got there in very different ways. Irwin with a bad tee shot had a little layup short of the creek and then flipped the third one on. Weisskopf with a good tee shot went for the green and two, went in the bunker and came out in three. Should have a big swing right to left here. Didn't look as though he no. hit it, but no time to get too frisky. Quickly, let's go down to the side of the 18th green. Bill Fleming with Gary Player. Yeah, and a quick word with uh, Gary, the former U.S. Open champion. Gary, I know how badly you want that number two. Well, Bill, I uh, would love to have won this great championship for a second time to give me that second Grand Slam. I have been second uh, to Tommy Bolt, that great golfer in 1958, which was my first U.S. Open ever. But I've enjoyed playing here immensely to the Inverness Golf Club for making this, uh, the facilities uh, so great. We really appreciate it. And to the USGA for sticking to their guns and making the golf courses where you have to drive it straight with nice lots of rough, fast greens and firm greens. I'd really like to congratulate them. I hope they keep making it as tough as this forever. Congratulations to you on a fine 68, and particularly in those great birdies at 17 and 18. Okay, Jim. All right. I think we can count on the USGA to fulfill Gary's request. <laughs> They'll keep making it tough. But the great players do like the great golf course. Well, the harder the course, uh, the better player, there's a better chance. 
They say, in effect, don't hand me anything. I'll come and take it. Okay, Thomas, if you ever made one, now's the time. No, he left it a little below, too, almost the same as Irwin. So good putt, though. Yeah, it was a good putt, but it's just going to be a par five, and that only matches the leader, so it keeps Weisskopf five shots behind. But he has to feel that that's almost a bogey for him there with an iron shot to the green and then make five. It was a golden opportunity to pick up a shot or two. It's going to be much more difficult from here on. The par five where, was where he almost had to do it. On tape, Tom Pertzer with this at plus two. Just a hit at 14. There's an attempt at a birdie. Just that close. Mm. So that keeps him in a tie with Gary Player for fourth place. He made the par. So we carry on as the gallery does, moving along with the players. We started with the leaders on the first hole. We heard their names announced. We saw them tee off. We've been with them all the way. They are walking today. Just the yardage of the holes we figured out is 3.97 miles and then you figure walking from green to tea and so forth they'll have about a four and a half mile walk today and we've been with them every step and some walking side to side maybe even more ah. if they're looking for their ball there you have Weisskopf now on the 14th hole Not too much. Not too it looks much. like it's hooking a little too much well, the crowd's scurrying uh, it's not too bad, though. It's far enough where he's just going to have a short iron into the green. I don't think that tree's going to bother him. That's what I was wondering about. We saw that tree there. All depends on the angle you're looking from. Kind of a festive sight here on Father's Day in Toledo, Ohio. You see by the garb of the people that it's hot. It's summertime. It really feels good. We haven't had much hot weather in the eastern part of the United States this summer. How about that, Bob? Well, this looks like a pretty good drive. He didn't like it. No, oh. it's left. I yeah. thought it was going to cut back in, but it's in the bunker. Oh, boy. So Irwin's driver continues to betray him, see if he can come back yet again and hold on to that lead. <laughs> Lots of ways to watch the open. <laughs> Irwin in trouble. 14th hole. Wayward tee shot. He's out and up the fairway. Well back this 14th hole, 448 yards. There he is. Holes running out. Still five shots ahead though. Now must keep calm and cool because this man can hold the putts and hit the, the great shots and if he puts this on the green well who knows oh, pitch short charged on and just as you see going through the back of the green disappointed Weisskopf thinking that the gods might have been a little kinder. But really, he was off the fairway and did well, perhaps, to get it there. Some of the scores already in. Nicholas Fergus, low amateur, Fred Couples. And back to Irwin, playing his third shot. 14th. Taking a lot of trouble. Doesn't really want any silly mistakes now, but with his driver uh, being a little wayward, he's putting a tremendous strain on his iron shots of the green. Two or three deep breaths, just clear the brain concentrate on the shot.
This is a beautiful looking shot. Yeah, fine shot right over the flag again. Touch long, but you saw there how receptive the green was to that well-struck shot by Halo Irwin. Just pitched right in and jumped back. Irwin on for three. There's Bill Rogers, the 18th. This is a fascinating hole, I think. 354 yards. And what problems it's caused. You'll give me a chance, please. Down the hill. Quite a wide fairway. Flag today, front left corner. Green slopes severely from right to left. But the first objective, really, to get the ball on the fairway. Although we did see Gary Player in a splendid three from not a very good drive down the right hand side. That's it. And Bill Rogers. One of the few modern players who does not use a left hand glove. And that's nicely on the cut portion. Not too far away from the green. 15th fairway now, Jerry Pate. Pate two over and... Oh, jumped back and just jumped off the fairway into the fringe. Leaves him a very delicate little chip. Going up to the 16th now and Larry Nelson, who's played very well in this tournament. He had a shaky day yesterday, particularly over the opening holes, but he's four over par. This for a birdie. Very smooth, slow swing of the club. A little too slow and gentle there. But really, the speed of these greens has to be seen to be believed. And the surface too. The surface is absolutely immaculate. Nelson. 75, 68, 76 is rounds so far. Start of the day, two over, and he's four over now, so two over. Par in for a 73. Tom Pertzer, 15th. Well, it's blowing hard, sir, from left to right. Dribbled away. Weisskopf, little chip from behind. That could be. Oh, what a good one. That's a four at 14. I think we can give him that one. It's only six or seven inches short of the hole. But he'll mark because he does not wish to stand across or on Hale Irwin's line of putt. Irwin having played three. Now again, just up to the hole. If it drops in, well, good luck. But uh, certainly a no point now that uh, Weisskopf's toe already taken four here. No point in him sort of dropping more than one stroke. So really, if he goes four or five feet past, it would be uh, either rather too courageous or a bit ultra clumsy five strokes ahead Irwin crowd still and quiet one of the great things about golf I think and one of the nice things is that the crowds come to applaud the game uh, and the players so you don't know sort of booing one or cheering t'other putting down the hill at the 14th. And it's away to the right, but safe. This is the last match out on the course. And these grandstands, as we call them at home, and bleachers here have been occupied pretty well since early this morning. People just waiting to watch their heroes pass by. A Weisskopf with a little Tiddler for his four. And remains one over. Now back to Bill Rogers, the 18th.
watch this spin. Unlucky, you see, if he'd pitched that past the hole, could have spun back. He can hardly believe it. But, sir, now how about this for a naughty little bunker shot? Up the bank, one foot out of the sand, the flag just four or five paces on the green. Very difficult. Uh, tried to play the right shot, but you see what happened. Just went in too deep. Very difficult indeed. So now he's playing four. And every one of these strokes now very costly indeed. Still a tricky shot. Half buried. Yeah, good shot. Look at it go there. That shows you the speed. Fifteenth now on the tee, Tom Weisskopf. There have only been three birdies here at the fifteenth today. This shows you um, how difficult it's been. There's our whole model. There's the tee. You drive between the trees there. Quite a narrow opening. Bunkers on the left, which really shouldn't bother these great men. And then onto the green. Bunkers all round. Weisskopf. Four behind. About to drive. Balls to the right. Short of the right-hand bunker, though, and sitting up pretty well. Good break. That's the voice of Bob Rosberg, who's been following this match right from the first hole. This hole's playing a lot longer today, Peter, than it has in the, in the past couple of days, because the wind has turned around and it's blowing across and almost hurting uh, at this hole. Weisskopf hit an eight iron for a second shot at the previous hole when they were playing two irons uh, uh, in the previous days. Now Irwin on the tee. Now he's been having problems with his driving. Needs a couple more straight ones and he could be the champion. And this one it starts way left but it's cutting right back in the middle of the fairway. He has really gone to the saw to keep that thing in the fairway now. Well, so Irwin on the fairway, we're going to leave you for a couple of moments, but we will return to live golf at Inverness in a couple of minutes. They're fighting at home in the winds of Inverness in the United States Open Golf Championship. This is Jim McKay with Dave Marr at our ABC, and at the moment also BBC anchor position behind the 18th green. All of this action going live across the Atlantic by satellite as well as all across the United States. Al Guyberger for a par now on the 18th hole. He has not had a good day. Seven over for the day. This was Jerry Pate just a few moments ago for a par that he certainly needed and made to stay at two over for the tournament in a tie for third place with Gary Player who's finished. Now Al Guyberger live for the par four. He bunkered his second shot on the short par four 18th hole. And he's got to get that round out of the way. 78 today for Al Guyberger. Been having a good year, though, Jamie. Won at Colonial a few weeks ago. And uh, anytime you win a golf tournament at Colonial, you've, you've played uh, uh, one of the best courses in this country. Certainly true. Al Guyberger, who once shot 59 in competition. Now, Hale Irwin, having safely maneuvered his tee shot now exactly what is he doing here you know when rossi talked about he went to the saw well what he's trying to do is to cut the ball uh i'm assuming it's uh, a left to right uh right to left win rather so he's mm -hmm. going to try to hold it in the fairway if there's anything Hale needs to do right now is just hit the ball in the fairway and he can't get in any trouble if he can make a couple of pars the game's over now now back live with him with his second shot on this hole 
And he walks away. I'm going to change clubs. Never the greatest sign of confidence. About what do you think he's hitting, Bob Rosberg? You're out there. Well, he's got about 190 yards, and uh, I would just think that in his mind, he's not sure how he wants to play the shot. The wind is really coming out of the left, and that's the hardest shot in the world to play when you're when you're trying to get in. You're, you're trying to, to hit some kind of a shot that you can control, but with the wind coming as strong as it is from left to right, it's hard to hold any kind of a shot in it. I would think that he's taking a four iron and going to hit it hard. hit it and it's blowing to the right though it's gone to the right can hear him say get down oh it's in the bunker the leader has gone in the bunker the game that was so steady most of the way around is anything but steady right now and we see it happen year after year after year in the United States Open so lest you think it indicates any flaw of character just try it sometime <laughs> yes Dave you did this in the PGA championship one year can, can you describe what it feels like inside Hale Irwin right well, now? Well, it, he's so indecisive right now, and I feel that things begin to happen. They begin to happen very fast, where at first I'm sure everything was sort of in slow motion. And if there is a game plan in golf, it was going according to plan. Now he's changing clubs. Now he's uh, staying back on his right side too long and hitting a hook. And there he's outsmarted himself didn't take enough club and got it up in the wind and it's in the trap now he's leaving the door open for this man right here and uh, he's not too bad a country player this uh, Tom was called no there we see the situation in other words in golf you you can't freeze the ball you can't go to your four corners offense not that they're understanding that in England right now that's a basketball term you have to keep playing forward this ball's to the left Jim in the left hand rough well, Weisskopf not able to take advantage of the trouble of the leader right now. It's a four-shot difference. Hale Irwin, three under par for the championship, one over on today's round. Weisskopf, one over for the tournament. We're going to move across to Tom Pertzer, who started this day in spectacular fashion with four threes, three birdies and a par three. Then got into all sorts of trouble. A couple of bogeys and then a double bogey on the eighth hole when he made the mistake of trying to play it down the 17th fairway and made seven, a double bogey that put him in a position from which he has not been able to recover. He's four over now, seven shots out of the lead. It's high for fifth with Nelson and Rogers. That would still be a good finish. I know he's be disappointed and look back at that eighth hole for a long time, but that may teach him a lesson for the next time he gets in that position to go maybe with a little bit better percentage shot than he did. It's you easy for us to say up here. Yeah. but You can see the flag way in the distance there in the middle of the picture blowing from right to left. Played it right there. Played it right there, he said. Go. And it's we on the front. I'm sure he was looking for the wind to move it from right to left. And sometimes, as you know, if you hit it well, the wind doesn't seem to affect it. <laughs> True enough. I looked down that fairway. Now Larry Nelson for a birdie on the 17th hole. Nelson at four over for the tournament could move out of that tie with Pertzer and Bill Rogers. It's a long putt. And he was sure making the attempt. The question. was co-leader of the tournament on Friday night. Tom Pertzer. Now back down to Jerry Pate. As he is about to hit his second on 16. Pate at two over is in third place, tied with Gary Player. Seven or five shots off the lead. Beauty. Good shot. Yep. He'll have that attempt for a birdie. And with Waskoff in trouble, uh, he could move up into second place all alone here if he should make that and, and Tom Bogey. We're a long way from dark here, by the way. Toledo is on the edge of the Eastern Time Zone in the United States. Here's David Graham, an Australian. Regular, however, on the American tour. David at five over for the tournament is definitely on the leaderboard. 
Playing the 18th hole, a 354 yard par four. Pin position a little easier today than it has been earlier in the tournament. Now that'll come down. That watch might it, watch be it real right good. at the flag. Watch this. <laughs> mm. <laughs> How sweet it is. Now Weisskopf with his third shot on the par four hole. Trying to get it close. He must make sure of his par. Good shot. Yeah. Okay. All right. No sure thing, but he's certainly got a solid shot at the par here. What of the leader Irwin? He's not up there yet. Well, that puts the pressure on Hale. Now he's in that trap still to play his shot. And this is one of those awkward little bunker shots that you have. It, it's you've got a lot of that tall grass between you and the green and you've got to hit it hard enough to carry over that, Jim. All right, here's the shot now. Hello. That's the way you win the Open. The crowd gathering around him now and around the 18th green awaiting him. Total attendance today, 21,153. It would have been even more than that, but they've limited attendance here very intelligently and very kindly, really, so that everyone would have a chance to see the golf when they came out here. It's tough to gallery a major tournament. And now we have uh, Bob. Gilder and David Graham playing the 18th as you have a look at the gallery. As I said, they are beginning to gather around, awaiting the arrival of the man who looks like the winner at the moment, Hale Irwin. But we're going to stay with him because he still has a few holes to go. Tom Pertzer on the left and Weisskopf on the right. Other way around. Thank you. Pertzer on the left. That is for a birdie. Just off the edge of the green. That's why I left the flag stick in. On the 16th hole, Weisskopf now on the 15th for a par. He must have, he must have, have any chance left. Trailing Irwin by four. Irwin after that bunker shot, looking like he will make his par. I'm studying it. He had hoped so much for victory here today in his home state of Ohio. On a golf course, where he first saw a major golf tournament as a young kid 22 years ago. All right. Well done. So the par four for time, Weisskopf. leader, Hale Irwin. That was just a lovely bunker shot, wasn't it? So many times during a round, there is a particular shot that you look back on that sort of, well, that made it for you. If he goes ahead and makes this and wins, I'd be interested to hear what he says in the press tent later. It's just as he was getting a little shaky, then he played this marvelous shot up out of the bunker. All right, he's made the par. Hale Irwin has three holes left to play, and he has a four-shot lead. However, I would suggest let's all stick around. Well, unless he drives it straight. That's <laughs> I mean, right. 16 and 17, uh, they'll get your attention. They're both very fine par fours, and, of course, 18 is one of the hardest easy holes I've ever seen, or easy-looking. Jerry Pate now. On 16 for a birdie. Three. It would move him into the tie with Weisskopf. And the former U.S. Open champion almost does it. So. The one he has left will keep him at two over. Battle beginning to look like it's for second place, but as we said, you really can't quite say that when anybody has three holes to play in the United States Open. Here's the man who has a chance. He hasn't been able to make the birdies where he has needed them and where he's had the opportunities on the back nine. 405 yard, par four. We'd like to check the win situation again with you, Bob Rosberg, on this hole. 
it's blowing almost straight across from right to left. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that Tom would hit an iron off this tee. I can't see what he's got in his hand. He's got a wood. He's going with a wood, Rossi. Well, I'm very surprised. It, Looks like he started to the right. And it has yeah. gone into the bunker yep. just and, and very close to the lip. I don't think he's going to be able to get it to the green. David Graham finishing up. David is five over for the tournament. So birdie. Yep. Put him back to four over if he makes it. Yep. No, couldn't do it. So he'll stay at five over for the tournament. David Graham, he started the day at three over, so that'll be a round of 73. Par here, remember, is 71. By the way, we saw a couple of people miss putts that short on this hole yesterday. <laughs> now we're winning. They're taking their time. Okay, Hale. He's also got a wood, Rossi. I imagine he'll cut it into the wind and, and try and hold it in there. He looks like he's hit a pretty good one here. This is right down the middle of the fairway. Perfect. The momentum seems to have returned to Hale Irwin for a couple of holes. The shakiness that attacks all potential open champions seem to have gotten to him a little bit. But that bunker shot, as Dave Marr said, in the last hole may have really done it for him. There you see the way they stand. Gary Player, as you see, has finished his round. He had 68 today. The broad fairways of Inverness. We're going to take a break here shortly and then come back to finish it up to bring him home in the U.S. Open at Inverness. Now that's Lee Elder coming on to the 72nd green, marking his ball. Nine over. Bit unhappy day today for Lee Elder. Started at two over, now nine over. Dropped two strokes at the 17th hole. That's how they are. Just three holes to go for Halo Irwin, and that's one of the splendid camera views we have looking down on the golf club at Inverness. And there's Halo Irwin on the 16th, just consulting the book, looking at the yardages. This hole, 405 yards. Bob Rosberg's there. What sort of shot has Hale got, and how's Tom Weisskopf looking, Bob? Well, Hale, I believe, will take a seven iron and just play a knockdown shot some, somewhere out to the right and let the wind blow it and the slope of the green take it toward the hole. Tom, I don't think, can get to the green. Uh, he's got to hit the ball up in the air very, very quickly, and I don't think he can reach the green. First halo in second shot. Hale's got it going right at the flag. Beautiful looking shot. Yes, gets the backspin. Just goes rolling back five, six, seven paces beyond the hole. Another splendid iron shot. Four ahead and nicely on the green. Oh, and there's Tom Weisskopf. This is sort of a funny spot, Peter. Uh, it's Right now, it looks like Tom is pretty well out of winning the golf tournament, but I guess you never play for second. Uh, he knows he's probably got a shot lead uh, for second, but he's still trying to win the golf tournament. And you just have to take a shot at trying to knock this ball in the green rather than taking a wedge and knocking it halfway. Hit it a mile in the air. It's going left, though. And I imagine that ball is buried in the bunker. Uh, Weisskopf looking down and wiping the perspiration from his brow. As yet, well, so far it would appear anyway, a championship that he might have won slipping quietly through his fingers. 18th, uh, Larry Nelson finishing this championship for him at four over par. It's four over at the moment. And apart from a, a shaky beginning to his uh, round yesterday, 
has played along very smoothly indeed. Two over today. So four on this final hole for a round of 73. Par 71. And what a tough 71 it's proved to be. Yes, well done. 73, four over, that's uh, not bad at all. Tom Pertzer, oh, hello, that was buried and that might have hurt his elbow. It, holding something there, I hope he hasn't damaged himself too badly. That never got going, that spurted away. Hollis, Stacey's there, what happened there, Hollis? Unfortunately, Tom was in deep, deep rough. You could barely see his golf ball, and he just swung really hard with a short iron, and uh, it just closed the club face. He's again in the left rough. Well, Jerry Pate's shot is on the way. Jerry has hit it left of the green. Again, he was in left rough, deep rough, and he's left of the green, and he's going to he's gonna have a difficult shot coming back. Well, way over off target and off line. 18th and Lee Elder. This for a three. Uh, just tiptoed past the hole. Elder finishes. Nine over. 78. But, sir, again in the rough, there's Weisskopf now with an awkward stance. You can see at the 16th, he's out of the bunker. Ball looks to be well below his feet. Oh, good shot. <laughs> Been only four birdies here at the 16th hole today. And Frank Hannigan, Weisskopf's record in recent years been pretty impressive in the Open without actually winning one. Yeah, it's really extraordinary, Peter. He was second in 76, third in 77, fourth in 78th, and here he is again today. But no cup. No. Well, Pertzer, and how about this for a difficult shot? Wind left to right, flag on the left side of the green, all the bunker to go across, and only three bogeys here at the 17th hole today. Three birdies, Gary Player had one of those, and there he plays it safely and sensibly onto the green and has a shortish putt, but it'll be for a par. Jerry Pate going across to his ball. Pate, two over, now level with Gary Player. And Player could well, well, who knows, finish second, David Graham. Good score for David, although he missed that short putt on the last hole. Jack Nicholas finishing with a <laughs> almost a, a vintage round for Nicholas, but as he said himself, he just couldn't get it together early enough. Now Irwin for a three at the 16th. Wayward, a bit head up, a bit quick. But he really has shown tremendous composure, I think, this man today. Of course, he's very experienced and uh, one of the great players in the world. He's battled away. He hasn't been happy with his driving. But he's there, leading the field by four. Some scores of other players. These, of course, have all completed their 72 holes. Par here at 284. So you see Lon Hinkle plus 20, 304. Weisskopf for a par at 16th. And with Gary Player already in the clubhouse, another sparkling performance from him, really. He's in there at two over. setting them a target, certainly a target for second place, and who knows what may happen over these last couple of holes. Nice 
putt well struck just grazed the hole A lot of tension and a lot of people here, Frank, and a uh, play, I suppose, from the USGA point of view. Do you look upon this as a rather slowish round, or do you take that all into account when you time these things? Meanwhile, it would just have a look at Pate now playing his third shot at the 17th, scuttling it through the edge, and uh, it's a pretty good effort from there. How has the USGA stand been on slow play here in this championship, Frank, this week? Oh, as far as I'm concerned, Peter, play is too slow. It's just too slow. Weisskopf booms it in, but that's a stroke. Drop to par. Two over now, tied with Pate and Player. But Player already completed his four rounds. And no doubt, sitting quietly somewhere watching the telly. Owen at the 16th is four. Yes. Great composure. Another par tucked away. These two started playing at 2.40 today. And it's now getting on when it's gone 20 past six here, so I suppose it's about... 25 past, getting on for 25 past 11 for you at home as you watch Tom Pertzer for a par. And still a bit to do. Pertzer five over, start of the day at one over. Jerry Pate. Start of the day, one over, now uh, two over, so one over for today. A very smooth putter. And there you see it. What's that? About nine feet, maybe ten. Certainly ten. This is for a par four. This to remain tied for second place. Seventeenth tee now, Hale Irwin, leader by five. Little dog leg, slight dog leg, you see the fairway curving round, 431 yards. Fairway dips down, if you drive it too far, there's a bunker on the right, and then you drop down to the green, below the uh, fairway down at the bottom of the hill. Ball's way to the right in the rough. Very, very short. And he's behind a tree, but a little tree on the edge of the fairway. And I don't know, our camera angles or camera angles generally can be rather confusing. And we'll have to wait and see whether, in fact, that tree will influence Irwin's second in any way. Uh, Weisskopf. Five behind. That ball's also to the right, well to the right in the rough. Uh, he's some 40 yards past Hale Irwin. Well, uh, we're going to leave you, but we shall be back to show you 
the climax of this year's Open Championship at Inverness. We're back at the U.S. Open, Inverness Club, Toledo, Ohio. Walking home to victory, it appears, with Hale Irwin. He has a five-shot lead over Tom Weisskopf and Gary Player, who had 68 today. Six shots over Jerry Pate. Interesting that those four men on the top of the board have all won major championships. Irwin won the U.S. Open five years ago. We have a former British Open champion in Tom Weisskopf. Jerry Pate, a former U.S. amateur and U.S. Open champion. And Gary Player, who's won three British Opens, three Masters, two PGAs, and one U.S. Open. So the great golfers have come to the fore at the conclusion of this tournament on a great golf course. So about the way you would figure it to be. Well, if there were a question in anyone's mind about Inverness and whether it was too old or too short or too little or too something, it uh, certainly has stood, stood up, Jim, against the best players that we have. We're live right now to the United States and to Great Britain. And for those of you in America who have tuned in for ABC's World News tonight, Sunday, we're going to be running long, and we may well, well run all the way through the news assigned time tonight to bring home not only Jerry Pate here, who is now playing the 18th hole and has put his tee shot right in the middle of the fairway on the short par four, but also, of course, to bring home the winner, Hale Irwin. There you see the wind blowing right into the face of the golfers as they come down the 18th fairway. Here's Tom Pertzer, who it appeared hurt his elbow coming out of the rough on the last hole. Pertzer, who is five over par for the tournament, started off so marvelously with four threes, but came off the tracks before he finished the front nine. This is the first time they've played this hole into the wind, Jim. It's usually been left to right. You see a lot of players up in that right rough. Everybody seemed to like that one. There it comes. Going to the left side, well, right in the middle of the fairway, really considerably short, however, of where his playing companion, Jerry Pate, went. Well, I hope he didn't hurt his arm, because no. you can do that very easily when you know that tall roof. Well, here's the man with the five-shot lead, Bob Rosberg. Does he have a major problem? Well, he doesn't have a major problem because he's got a five-shot lead. Yeah. If he had a one-shot lead, he'd really be in trouble because he's got a shot of about 220 yards out of a bad lie, and he's got the creek down here to worry about. Uh, he's got the kind of a lie that the ball might go a long ways, and then again it might not. It's a very strange kind of a lie. But the wind is almost into him, and this hole has really played long today. The green is below him there, down where that crowd is, way down. See, there's, there's the brow of the hill, uh, and way past there, there's a creek in the green. He's actually playing blind, Jim. He can't yeah. see the green. Right. He's hit a good, solid shot. A little left, but uh, okay. Kicking short of the bunker, I believe. No, it went uh, in, Bob. Is in the bunker? Yeah. Yep. So he's in the bunker, but with a five-shot lead. One would hardly think he has anything to worry about. Again, on the leaderboard, we have Hale Irwin and Tom Weisskopf, Gary Player, Jerry Pate, Bill Rogers, Larry Nelson, Tom Pertzer, David Graham, Jack Nicholas at 68 today, Keith Fergus came in at plus seven, Ben Crenshaw and Andy North, the defending champion, at plus nine, along with... Lee Elder and Cal Pete. Now, Weisskopf. He did a real good shot right at the middle of the green. Fine shot, but again, going too long. It has almost all day long for him. He has really hit some shots that I'm sure look good to him, and for one reason or another, they just have not been the right club. Again, consider his record in the open. It really has been unfortunate as you look at some other scores of people who have finished 1973 he finished third and then in the last three years he's tied for second tied for third tied for fourth here at the moment he is tied for second again with Gary Player in the Masters he's finished second four times and never won it. So Tom Weisskopf one of the great players of the world it has not been a question of him folding on the final holes there's always as you said Hale Irwin was saying about his last year of play generally there's always just been somebody just in front of him. Well, Tom had a real good chance to win at Oakmont. And Johnny Miller shot 63 and, of course, wiped everybody out. Just things like that do happen. As we continue to show you the scores, there's John Cook, the U.S. Amateur Champion. Arnold Palmer, Connecticut's John Gentile. Westport, Connecticut, I might add. 
We're going to be not far from there for the U.S. Women's Open Championship in a few weeks. And, David, I sincerely hope we're finally going to get in that round at Aspetuck. And We certainly are, and that's a good golf course there they're playing the Ladies Open on. He's Brooklyn. got a pretty long shot here, uh, Jim, and the wind is blowing pretty hard. It's hard to feel down in the area, and if that ball doesn't get down, well, it's way short. Oh, dear. Way short. That arm must be hurting him, don't you think? Well, it could. Of course, he is into the wind. Yeah, but it could be with an iron shot. It, off the tee with the wood, you're not going to get the same shock, so you'll go ahead and take a freer swing. Now, Jerry Pate, who is in fourth place all by himself at three over par. Yeah, now back to Hale Irwin, excuse me. Jerry Pate will be next on 18, but we are watching the leader with his difficult, difficult third shot on the par 4 17th. Again, this is one of those very, very difficult trap shots, I think. It's just a, a little bit longer than you're used to playing, especially here with the small greens. You have to carry the ball a long way over that trap. Caught it thin. Could hear it. Dear, dear, dear. Caught it thin. Way over in three. Well, he could make a double bogey six here. Could happen very easily. Assuming Weisskopf made a par, he would still have three-stroke lead but the hole isn't over it's just well, let's see where he it is does first. Get for him. that's right that's what I mean that's why the shot before that he played at the 15th hole I believe it was was such a marvelous golf shot at yep. a time when he really needed to hit a golf shot of course this bunker shot was a lot more difficult wasn't it on tape a moment ago here's Jerry Pate hitting his shot to the 18th green Almost ready to finish up his 72 holes in the 1979 U.S. Open. Good looking shot. Watch this. Watch it come down the green. Uh, yeah, watch it. Watch it. Slopes down from the clubhouse so sharply. Is it going to stop? Not yet. Well, it's going to stop now. Not yet. Well, now. Okay. So Jerry Pate will have a fair attempt at a birdie on the difficult 18th green. We had thought it might come down to a one-shot finish here. If it had, it would have really been something. As of the moment, it still looks like Hale Irwin should be an easy winner, but now if we get to that point we always get to in the open, it seems, where the security people are taking down the ropes and they're saying, move back over there, and we're trying to find where the leader is, and here is Tom Pritcher with his third shot on 18. With very little chance to get very close, Yes. Well, that's yeah. about all. Yeah. all we could do. Yesterday, there were 10 rounds under par here, only four today. Yeah, that just shows you what a little breeze will do. It's always harder to score in the wind as opposed to the rain. Yes, and as uh, Frank Hannigan explained earlier, the official is pointing to the exact place. And as a matter of fact, it looks like Sandy again. Sandy's doing a lot of pointing at where the ball hits the ground today. Yeah. You have to redrop it because not that it rolled two club lengths that time, but it rolled nearer the hole. Is that right, Frank? Yeah, that's exactly right, David. The ball, when dropped, uh, must be redropped if either it rolls Seems more than two club lengths or closer to the hole. In this case, it rolled closer to the hole. Okay. Ball's in play. That was the voice of Sandy Tatum, the president of the USGA, making the ruling. He said, the ball is in play, and so it will be. Now the leader, lying three from the par four hole. Well, he's not as bad off as I first yeah. uh, uh, assumed he may be uh, over that green. Obviously, he's not as bad off as Rossi pointed out. He has a five-shot lead. Yes. Still want to make sure of it. Again, if you've just tuned in for the news on ABC, it doesn't look like you'll be getting much of it, if any, tonight because of the fact that this major event in the world of sport, the United States Open Golf Championship, a national occasion, really, along with the sports event, has run a bit long, as they tend to do when anybody plays golf nowadays. Uh, well, they had a couple of penalties this week for slow play. Yes. Getting into the side of the bank and trickling down. But it's still going. And now he lies four.
now Tom Weisskopf. He lies only two. Now, uh, let's just let our minds work here a little bit. If this man should happen to chip this in, whoops, <clears throat> and then birdie the last hole, and Hale makes six, that would mean he'd have to par the last hole to win by a shot. That's right. So it's, it's even though one day you may look back and see that Hale Irwin won the U.S. Open by two or three shots, it, it sounds like an easy win, but strange things can happen as Jerry Pate gets ready for his birdie putt at 18, which would put him in a tie with Weiskopf and Gary Player at two over par. That's right. And he's done it. Uh, Jerry Pate started the day at one over. He will end at two over, a fine round of one over par, 72. Now Weiskopf with his third shot on 17. Oh, he needed a good deal more with that. So every time even a small opportunity opens up, it seems to go a glimmering for him. It's been a long way around. These men are tired, aren't they, David? Oh, the pressure, sure. When you And when you are under this much pressure, you're concentrating for four hours, four and a half hours or whatever. And, of course, you're always a little more tired if you don't win. Yes. Hale will be dancing at the Savoy tonight, <laughs> I believe. Tom Pertzer for a bogey five now. He's five over for the tournament. Needs this to go six over. It will not drop. Yes, it will drop him out of a tie with David Graham, even if he makes it. But he will finish ahead of Jack Nicholas, Keith Fergus, and yep. If he misses, he'll drop down into a tie with Jack Nicholas and Keith Fergus. Nicholas, who shot 68 today. Nicholas, of course, will be defending his British Open title soon, and we will be there. ABC Sports will be at the U.S. Women's Open, British Open, PGA, Ryder Cup, U.S. Amateur. Okay. Still a good finish, Jim. I'd uh, probably finish up high enough where we won't have to qualify next year and maybe even an invitation to Augusta, which is looking at the positive side of it. Five over par, 76 for Percher. Now back to Irwin with his fifth shot on the par for 17th hole. Tournament leader by five. And he should tap that in for a two over par six. That will cut his lead at least over Gary Player to three shots. Tom Weisskopf still must make his par. And Jerry Pate, too. And three. Jerry Pate, right. Gary Player and Jerry Pate, both of whom are in. Jerry Pate, remember. Had a 72 today to add to earlier rounds of 71, 74, and 69. Tom Pertzer opened with 70, then had 69, 75 yesterday, and 76 today. Tom Weisskopf needs this for par, as we said. He's had rounds of 71, 74, a fine 67 yesterday. On today's round, however, he's three over. If he misses this, he'll be four. Big swing right to left on this putt. And fast. And this is he did. Four over on today's round, and now three over for the tournament. That'll be when he puts this in the hole. There it is. Tom Weisskopf now with one hole left to play, and he has no chance at all. The only chance any of the others have would be for Hale Irwin to make seven on the last hole. It's a par four, 354 yards long, short. It has its difficulties, however, this hole. This will be the one on which Hale Irwin must make sure. 354 yard par four. You see there are plenty of bunkers both on the tee shot and around the green. On the right side, there's a hillock that a lot of try to go over that bunker, over the hillock, and kick down into the fairway. Very often, it doesn't happen that way. Then up on the green, of course, where the green that slopes down. There's a gully on the right that's terrible. Not only terrible, you just can't make, <laughs> make a par from there. Yeah. Pin placement a little bit better if you get up in there today because it's all the way on the other side of the green, but still terrifying shot. You don't want to be to the right on your second shot. The entire gallery now gathering around 18, ringing the entire hole. 
This hole was lengthened a little bit uh, because they felt, uh, I assume the USGA felt it was a little short, but uh, the hole still plays quite long because a lot of the players you lay up with a three wood or a one iron now against the wind. They're using drivers today, some of them. Well, the big roar you heard was the gallery on 18 just finding out that Irwin <laughs> made a six on 17. They say, whoops. Yeah, but they haven't put Weisskopf's score up yet, so they're not, no. they're not sure what Tom has done. Well, of course, we still know that, that Pate and Player have held steady because they're sitting in the clubhouse probably watching all this. Tom Weisskopf has hit what looks like a good shot. Yeah, it's right in the middle of the fairway, but quite short. Well, quite short. Back where Pertzer was on yeah. his drive. Yeah. But he had an iron. Yes. Now, let's see what Hale Irwin elects to do. If he makes another six, he will still win the United States Open. If he makes seven, we all come back tomorrow for a three-way playoff with Gary <laughs> Player and Jerry Pate. If he makes seven, he won't be here. He'll, <laughs> he'll do injury, bodily harm to himself. Well, he'll take a driver. Looks like. That ball's to the right. Somebody said that ball's to the right. That was Bob Rosberg. It is sure in the deep rough. However, Almost got back. Don't panic, Hale Irwin fans. He's not that far from the green. Most unlikely he would make seven. Not impossible, but most unlikely. Well, the side of that hill has been <laughs> pretty well reaped this week with yes. all the guys up there. <laughs> Divots have been flying off the side of that hill all week. And they've hit a lot of good shots from there. So it's not too deep there. Uh, Bill Fleming's down with Jerry Pate right now. Let's have a word with him. Jerry Pate is just saying, can you believe I made two double bogeys? Continue the thought. <laughs> well, I figured even part win the golf tournament. 100 for sure would win it. And uh, I hadn't had any double bogeys all week. And I consider myself one of the better drivers in, on the tour. And I drove the ball terrible today. And of course, you drive it bad in a US Open golf course, you get in trouble, you're going to make double bogeys. What did you think when you saw that uh, one go up by Irwin's name just moments ago with that double bogey at 17? Well, I think, Bill, it's almost too far out of reach, but, uh, you know, you, c you, you never can tell. Uh, he'd have to make, you'd have to make seven here, and he's in, I think he's in the deep rough, but I don't think there's any possibility. But the thing is, um, you know, I just feel bad about the way I played, you know. Uh, of course, so does Gary Player and Weisskopf and Percher and everybody else that had a chance, but... Uh, you know, I felt all day I had a chance to win the golf tournament and uh, uh, double bogeyed uh, five and then I double bogeyed uh, nine. I just got in too big a hurry, didn't hit my drives the way I wanted to and wasn't using my legs and uh, that's the name of the game, driving it. Got in too big of a hurry? What do you mean? Well, I just, uh, I didn't really hit a bad drive on five. It was in the edge of the rough. I hit a poor second shot, but uh, nine, uh, Tom and Percher and I played down number 17 fairway today on number eight and... Uh, we wondered about that. Well, I was in good shape. I should have birdied there, too. I hit a poor bunker shot. But uh, we took a long time, and I rushed over to number 9 tee and didn't really get set. And I hit a poor drive. I hooked it left under the tree. So uh, that cost me. And uh, that's just, uh, that's, there's no excuse for it. And, the margin uh, for error is very slim in a U.S. Open, right, Jerry? It sure is. And uh, you can't say enough for uh, driving the ball in the fairway. You know, putting is, is great. I putted well, and putting is great uh, to be a good putter but uh, you you must drive it in the fairway in the u.s open there's always next year let's go back to jim in other words of all the words of tongue or pen the saddest are these it might have been weisskopf it might have been for him so many times through his career too he's just uh one of the hard luck players it seems in winning as many tournaments as he's had a chance to win He's waiting for the couple of marshals up there to move over a little bit. Now, again, this is a shot that you haven't seen much this week. The hole is playing against the wind, so it's a club or two longer than the players are used to playing. Saw Percher a moment ago, leave it way short of the green. Birdie here, of course, would put him into that three-way tie again for second place, it appears. Yep, bunker. Bunker for Tom Weisskopf. Well... That's what happens. Now, the man of the hour, Hale Irwin. Doesn't seem like too long ago, Jim, I saw it. We saw him hit that wonderful two iron at the 18th hole at Wingfoot or the 72nd hole. That's right. Much different shot, but the prize is the same. 
staggering a bit more this time. He had a bogey on, he was cruising along four under par, then had a bogey on 14, and then the double bogey, six on 17. Now in the rough, and that's Boys coming left. Way to the left. Way left. Could be another bunker, yes. Yeah, but that's where you want to be. I mean, uh, where you want to be? Oh, well, if you're going to miss the green, yeah. I mean, if you make your mistake, you got to make it to the left. Now he's pitching out of the trap, up against the hill there. Uh, Absolutely, he couldn't miss the ball anywhere. to the right. And, and well, of course, that's what you mean. Yes. Yeah. I don't mean he shot at the trap. No, no, I mean, no. A player would never do. Well, I hear that from different people. Yeah. Talking about, well, do you shoot at a trap? Well, that's not near as big as the green is. <laughs> no, obviously. What Dave was talking about is that if you go to the right of the screen, you're in some long grass down in a gully, and it's very difficult even to hold the green when you're coming up. Now the tribute. The man who, it appears, is about to become the champion. They can't give him that full-blooded roar yet, though, you know, because... But they're trying. He just checked that scoreboard to be sure how he stood, though. Yep. Time enough for the great roar when he finishes up this hole. Well, he hasn't won in a long time, and I'm sure uh, this will make up for all the times that he came very near to winning and didn't get there. He couldn't pick a better tournament to win than the United States Open. He didn't look like a winner on the first day here. He had 74, three over par. He, he was down there with an awful lot of people at that point. Came back on Friday, however, with a 68. Yesterday, shaved another stroke off, 67. Today, well, he's three over par at the moment, but he was steady when he had to be. And now, must merely get that ball out of the bunker and onto the green and it's going to be all over, but Tom Weisskopf will play first. This becomes an important hole for Larry Nelson and Bill Rogers. If Tom should happen to bogey this hole, that moves them up a little bit, Jim. Yeah, he would drop down into a tie with them should he make a bogey five. This is his third shot. And again, he looks over this little bit of noise to the left of the green. Now, now total silence. Must be, well, they said the gallery was almost 21,000. Just the wind. Hurry. No oh dear. Left it in the long grass oh. off the edge of the green. It's a tough way to finish when you would hope to win the U.S. Open. Well, and he had a good shot at 17. Yep. He just happened to go through the green and then a, a pretty nice little chip back and misses the putt. And maybe the weight there with... Uh, waiting for the crowd to settle down a little bit. Broke his rhythm a little bit. The apparent champion to be, Hale Irwin now out of the bunker. He's coming up at the hole. It's very close to the edge of the green. There you see it. There it is. There it is. Good shot. And I'll tell you, he's very glad that's over. <laughs> now maybe we can see a little grin or think about his acceptance speech or whatever. Yep, he has three putts from there for a victory. Tom Weisskopf, meanwhile, now has a tough shot to make sure of a bogey five. Well, you'll get your one of your last chances to look. He's taking a putter out of there. Should he make six here, he would drop down past Bill Rogers and Larry Nelson into a tie with David Graham. I'm uh, interested to see what he does with this uh, putting out of the tall grass because this is so fast going that way down the hill. Yeah, it really is. If you hit it hard enough to get out of the tall grass and, or you jump it, heaven forbid that you jump that grass, He'll knock it through the green on the other side. Hale Irwin will win. Gary Player and Jerry Pate will tie for second and third. He's played a marvelous Boy, shot. he did. Huh? And still takes that break. He'll have that one for the bogey five to finish in a tie for fourth place with Bill Rogers and Larry Nelson. It's Irwin to be the winner. The coronation about to come. Again, Gary Player and Jerry Pate tying for second and third. Tom will go ahead and putt out here. Uh, yep. He talked to Hale about it already and just go ahead and get uh, finished. That's the general 
etiquette that you'll see so the winner can finish last and they can give him the roar and they don't have to wait for someone else to hold on well, or to be impolite yeah. to somebody else holding right. on. Now, to the, I've seen this putt stay on the right lip, and then Nicholas's putt, that this, this very same putt, broke out to the left. So it hasn't been one that's consistent. Inside the right of the hole seems to be the line. Okay. Got it. So the bogey five puts Tom Weisskopf in a final tie for fourth place with Bill Rogers and Larry Nelson. David Graham will be seventh, Tom Pertzer eighth, Jack Nicholas and Keith Fergus in a tie for ninth and tenth. Good finish for Keith, young man from Houston, another mm -hmm. University of Houston player. Crenshaw just back there. Al and Hale Irwin, lying three. Be nice if he finished up with a par, wouldn't it? Sure would. If he makes this, he wins by three strokes has a round of 74. Nope. Nope. The little one to come back now. Even if he misses this one, he still wins. Murmur from the crowd. They, they want to cheer the winner. They're <laughs> getting impatient now. Yeah. Well, I think Inverness wins because this will be 284. That's no right. one broke par. A very good point. A round of 75. <laughs> but he's the winner. Hale Irwin with his second United States Open Golf Championship at the age of 34. His first victory of any kind since San Antonio in 1977. The congratulations from Sandy Tatum, the president of the USGA, and from the crowd. And the comradeship with golf kind of illustrated in that picture right there. That's just great, Jim, because he is a, uh, has been a fine player a long time. He's a great gentleman, Hale Irwin. He is a very hard worker. 